Oh, that's Ben Kieran's there, standing right. next to Kendrick. On the left. Yeah, on, on Kendrick's left. And that's the one on the right. Don't trust him, that's a central place. Yeah, he's from one of the few. He's that man. He's all you. You got your mind. Someone in control? Is that half of the thing you don't know? I don't know. I'm not sure when he's in control. Hey, uh, is that maybe one of the things that we'll make sure we've got it?
excitement. You know, I grew up watching the Kings and going to their games, so to be able to play for them is just is great. I'm really excited to get, to get going. Three things about me that you didn't know. I'm an Eels supporter in the NRL. Um, my favourite movie is Wedding Crashes. And Uh, the camp's great for us here in Terrigal. They do a great job at looking after us, and the Kings have a long tradition of coming here. And for us as a group, it's just great to get away from training and come here and, and bond and spend a bit more time together as you would during the season. The group's already proven that it's going to work hard at practice, and, and we've got a lot of extra stuff asked asked of the guys and uh, they've been great as far as work and applying themselves. <laughs> Mighty Mike, 100% Australian made and family owned. The favourite ye spread of the Sydney Kings. Well, I chose Sydney because, uh, you know, as a culture standpoint, I think it was the best fit for me. Um, I had a few offers, but at the end of the day, I think I, after talking to my family, I think I'd be the happiest coming here to Sydney. I'm loving the environment, you know, the, the city atmosphere, and uh, the coaches and the, and the players, and just the whole Sydney Kings organization, you know, I'm having a great time. First practice was, it was all right, uh, personally. Got to get my legs back under me, and uh, I had too many turnovers. Uh, so, you know, but I'm still learning the place. It's definitely, it's a lot different from, you know, the American, uh, I guess, competition aspect. 
But, um, you know, there's some really good guys on this team. And, you know, they're very competitive. They work very hard. So, you know, I'm excited to, to play along them this season with a great coach like Dan. Yeah, it was a great experience. You know, um, even though I didn't play as much as I would like to, you know, I still learned a lot from uh, a lot of the older guys. And I was able to get an opportunity like this to play with the Sydney Kings. So, you know, uh, you know, you always got to find a silver lining in every dark cloud. So I like to think it worked out for me. A lot of energy, a lot of a lot of energy, a lot of positivity, uh, not on the offensive end, but on the defensive end as well. You know, uh, I think I feed more off of, a, off of a steal and a dunk. So I know the fans probably look forward to a couple of those plays. But, you know, just, just anything uh, the team wants me to do, I'm willing to do it with a positive attitude. We are just over a month away from the start of the 2014-15 NBL season and tonight begins a torrid run of pre-season games for the Mighty Might Sydney Kings. Good evening and welcome to the Sydney Kings basketball pre-game show. We're coming to you live from Scholastic Sports Stadium in Terrigal on the beautiful Central Coast as the Kings take on Korean club team, the Goyang Orions. I'm your host Matt McQuaid and thanks to our naming rights sponsor Mighty Might and our other great partners, United Airlines, the Sydney Boulevard Hotel, Nudie Juice, Audio Technica, Glencoe Electrical, St George Bank and Vicks Premium Quality Meat. We are coming to you live via sydneykings.com and the Sydney Kings TV YouTube channel. A special welcome to all fans tuning in this evening all the way from South Korea. Those fans in Sydney who couldn't make it to the game and many fans listening throughout the New England region on Tune FM and indeed all NBL fans with us this evening. Thanks for joining us and I hope you enjoy our coverage which tonight features full audio and video live streaming thanks to VPA Productions. I'm joined tonight not by one, but by two great players in Sydney Kings history. Of course, my regular broadcast partner, the man who won the 1992 NBL Grand Final Series MVP, the one and only Bruce Bolden. And tonight we go three deep with our second analyst. It's a great pleasure to once again welcome Channel 10 expert commentator and former Sydney Kings captain, Brad Lightning Rosen. Brad, welcome. Yeah, thanks. It's an honour to be here with the uh, with the A team. So I'm looking forward to tonight. Ah, <laughs> uh, more than merrier. Absolutely, guys. Uh, one, one of the big stories tonight is the debut of import point guard Kendrick Perry, the rookie out of Youngstown State. He wasn't taken in the recent NBA draft, but there's a lot of good judges who think he's good enough to get to that level. What are your expectations? And I'll start with you, Bruce, of Kendrick this season. Well, the expectation so far has been good, seeing some of the um, some of the dunks that that he's been throwing off the backboard and uh and causing havoc um you know you know being the point guard which is a key part to the uh to the team i think him he definitely needs to show some leadership you know direct the team and speaking to to damon carter uh, he seems to feel that he's much more mature than a 21 year old which is a, a pleasing thing that, to hear because uh, they definitely need that that experience from that point guard uh, point of view and, and filter that down through the team but Brad, obviously, we had another Kendrick in the past, Kendrick Johnson, who, of course, threw down that spectacular dunk at the Superdome over Tony Ronaldson all those years ago. And, and having an explosive type player, as he obviously is, is going to be huge for the club. Yeah, that's the bit I'm looking forward to. I felt last year the Kings probably lacked a little bit uh, on the fast break and getting cheap baskets. So, with, you know, with, with him being able to push the ball up and just seeing him the way he is and knowing uh, the recruit that Damien's bought, he's really quick up the court and they've added Jason Caddy in the backcourt as well. So between the two of them, and Ben Madgen likes to run the floor hard, uh, I'm really looking forward to hopefully some pressure defence and some really nice open court transition from the Sydney Kings. Bruce, you've seen both pre-season games so far. Kings 2-0 wins over Eastern Kentucky University and the University of Hartford. What has really impressed you about the Kings so far in the pre-season? Their intensity, uh, you can just tell that with, um, you know, what uh, Damon is bringing to the team, the focus, you can tell that it's, an, it's intensity. You can tell that it's a, an emphasis on, on the defense, which is going to open things up uh, in the transition point of view where they get uh, some consistent baskets in, in fast break, which uh, allows them to, um, you, you know, get that extra, extra points on the, on the board and they don't have to play a, a half-court game uh, as much, but... At the same time, you know, having uh, Angus in the middle who has really shown uh, a big presence down low. Um, and, and they also are starting a nice high-low action between him 
uh, Josh Dunker and uh, uh, um, Tommy Gallup. Tommy Gallup. Yeah, and, and that's that's pleasing to see because I thought they really missed that last year, and it, was, it could have been a big key to them uh, being a lot more successful last year. And to both of you, we obviously know very little about Goyang as a, a Korean club side, but the one thing we do know about these Asian teams, they love to spread the floor and they love to jack it up from long range. The speed is going to be interesting, Brad, first of all, from a matchup perspective tonight. And how well do you think the Kings can match up? We know these guys are going to run hard every time they've got the ball. Yeah, well, that's going to be the test for them. I mean, we, you know, we played a lot against teams like this in pre-season as well. And the number one thing they'll look to do is penetrate. They'll get, they'll up fake, they'll penetrate to the middle, and even if they can have a layup, they'll kick it to a corner. And the number, these teams play really good off the ball. And that's a great test for the Sydney Kings. They, you know, some of the NBL teams don't do great defense, you know, great offense off ball. So if the Kings can get into the frame of mind of locking down their man, be able to be in the split line, which is a key, and making sure they get good vision, tonight will be a good test for them. Obviously, we're only a couple of weeks away from the Blitz. Bruce, hey. Eastern Kentucky, just to, sorry to interrupt you, I was just going to say, the Eastern Kentucky game, there was a lot of that, that pressure, and, and Hartford obviously played very small ball. I mean, that's got to help tonight against this team. It is. I mean, you got three teams, three different teams that's given, uh, that's, that's given a, a different game plan, and, and I guess it helps the Kings from being complacent and trying to, to work on one or two, th two things for, for the Kings. Um, but in, in saying that with, uh, with going here today, if the Kings can be consistent with their offense and um, go ahead and take the ball out of the basket, then that's going to help them get back in transition D and set up their, their half-court defense as well. And just tonight for everybody out there, Ben Madgen um, isn't playing. He's actually at the wedding of former Kings center and Kings captain Julian Kazoo. So congratulations to, to Julian. That's a bit of a Kings family as well. It is. Yeah, getting married Ken to Jesse Leah Kendall, of that's course, right. the sister of former Kings guard Luke Kendall. So um, congratulations to the happy couple. Other than that, uh, the other news is that um, I'm sure people have seen Josh Childress, the uh, Sydney Kings superstar import. He's not in uniform tonight. He is in the building, uh, complete with Afro, and it's a rather <laughs> big one. Mate, he's, the, uh, he's I was going to say he's the smoothest import I've ever seen, but Bruce is sitting next to me, so wow. he's the second <laughs> smoothest yeah. import I've ever seen. Fair call, fair <laughs> call. You just got here, so you're already starting on a positive note. <laughs> All right, we've got about eight and a half minutes to go to tip off here. So we're going to go through the lineups for you. Starting with the Orions, um, I'm just going to go through a numerical order. Uh, number zero is their big American forward, Troy Gillenwater, out of New Mexico State, 6'7 forward. Number one is Kang Soon Kim, the 6'3 guard. Hyun Moon Lee, number three, is a 5'10 guard. Do Su Kim, a 6'4 forward, is number is a three. Number five is Jong Gil Jong Gil. Lim, a 6'4 forward. Number seven is Jung Kyo Chung, 6'2 guard. Jae Hoon Lin is a six foot guard, number nine. Number 12 is Kyung Suk Mo, 6'3 guard. Dong Up Kim is a 6'5 forward. Jae Sok Jang is uh, a big Korean, 6'9 center. And Charles Garcia Jr. at 6'10. Uh, uh, and they've also got a couple of, uh, looks like some development players here Sing Paul Lin, Jae Jung Sung, Chan Sun Park, and Hoban Han. Head coach of the Orions is Il-Sung Chu, assisted by byung Chul Hyun Kim and Sung Hyu Cho. And if I mispronounce those, I apologise. But to Bruce Bolden for the City Kings lineup. Well, you can rest assured not to ask me to help you out with that uh, pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, um, I'll start with the Kings. We haven't had a, uh, a definite uh, starting lineup, so I'll, I'll start from the top with um, Jason Kadi, the, uh, the player that's come over from the from the. LA 36ers, uh, one of the local players that uh, very exciting, big future, and uh, uh, someone to look forward to watching. The import, Kendrick Perry, uh, making his uh, debut in the Central Coast here. Angus Brent has given uh, the team a very good presence inside, uh, playing the center spot. Daniel Joyce, the last remaining uh, signing of the team, and uh, a big basketball family uh, with the Joyce uh, and a former teammate of mine, Ben Kieran. Tommy Gallup, who is a, um, one of the veterans on the team who uh, will be displaying a lot of leadership this year. James Trustin, Josh Dunker, back from uh, playing overseas as well. Another local kid from uh, Hornsby. Kevin White, the, uh, the defensive enforcer. Coley Ellis uh, coming in from um, having a half season last year, which was very productive. I'm sure he's looking to have a, uh, an even better one uh, coming this year. Matt O'Chow, uh, Sudanese kid from Penrith. Head coach. Damien Carter, assistant coach, Robbie Kinlay, and the legendary team manager, Laurie Watterson. 
All right. So we've got six minutes left and just wanted to remind everybody, make sure you check out our uh, Sydney Kings Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash Sydney Kings. And of course, don't forget to visit the Sydney Kings website, www.sydneykings.com. Also check out our Sydney Kings TV and radio Facebook page and the Sydney Kings Line Facebook page, best mascot in the National Basketball League. And of course, remember the NBL website, www.nbl.com.au. NBL, bring it. And of course, it's customary on Sydney Kings TV as it is tonight. It's time <laughs> to do our shout outs. Firstly, from me to Mitch Ivey of Tune FM TV in Armadale. Again, uh, Tune FM in Armadale. A great, uh, again, great to be partnering with Tune FM for another season. Once again, to the Kings fans who couldn't be here tonight, to all the fans watching us from South Korea, welcome. To all NBL fans both here and overseas. On a personal note, to Leonie Wrightson, her husband Tim, and her beautiful sons Travi and Liam. I know they're watching and listening in this evening. Anna and Bruce Coxon, hello man Ma, out in Blacksland in the Blue Mountains. And of course, my beautiful girl, my boss is Bruce Colzer, yes, Rachel yes. Coxon. And he's sitting with us tonight, but I just wanted to give a special shout out to a young man called Eric Barrett. Uh, he's been an inspiration to many people, without a doubt. And for those who don't know Eric, and there's not many of you, he was diagnosed with cerebral palsy when he was just two weeks old. Wasn't even supposed to live very long, let alone walk. But with some amazing courage and character that he shows every day, he fought on, learnt, learnt to walk when he was 12, thanks to the support of his tremendous family, his mother Karen, who's also in the building tonight, and a trainer named Luke, who basically changed his life. Eric is now 15 and walking unaided. He does a great job with the Sydney Kings and he's an assistant with his beloved Central Coast Crusaders in the Waratah League here in, in uh, New South Wales. And in mid-October, around the day of his birthday, 16th birthday, Eric is actually going to climb the Sydney Harbour Bridge for charity, 1,400 steps. And he's doing it to, for a very, very worthy cause. All funds donated are going to the Donica Clark Foundation and you can donate via a very worthy cause by going to his website, ericsgiveback.com.au. That's E-R-I-C-S-G-I-V-E-B-A-C-K.com.au. And as I said, all funds raised will go to the Donica Clark Foundation. The aim of the foundation is to offer financial and moral support to young athletes across all sports from the Central Coast region of New South Wales. It's a great cause. Eric does tremendous work. So I urge everyone listening to go to the website and donate today. And as a special treat at half time, we're actually going to have an interview with Eric. We're going to talk about his walk up the Harbour Bridge and what it means to him and also the Donica Clark Foundation. So make sure you stay tuned at half time for our special guest, Eric Barrett. So to all of us, thanks for joining us and I hope you enjoy our coverage. We're not going to miss out on your shout outs, my friend. Mr. Bolden, because you missed out last time. Yeah, yeah, the last time I was running a little bit late, so he's in a hurry. That's okay. Um, That's because Matt's got 45 of them. <laughs> I know. How's that for a run through? <laughs> That's what happens when you get married. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't say that. She's, she's listening. Yeah, hello, Rach. <laughs> hey, Rach. <laughs> Nothing personal. Hope that all helps. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, always, uh, always willing to give a shout out to the family back in uh, Flint, Michigan there. Uh, and also a shout out to uh, my son that's over in UCLA uh, Bruins Nation land. Mr. Rosen? M my only shout out is my wife. Thanks for letting me come. <laughs> <laughs> that's, she, that's all I'm allowed. Uh, she, yeah, she let you out. She yeah. doesn't know. <laughs> well, she doesn't know. You stuck out the I'm at work, door. dear. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Nick. Don't blame me. <laughs> Three minutes to go here. The both teams just being introduced. And James Trustum, Central Coast youngster, getting a huge hand from this large crowd here it's just about a sellout here at scholastic sports stadium tonight guys i'll throw something at you this is the first game that i it's, it's probably to bruce and one of the things that's concerned me in the season is probably the the the, the height and, and i look at angus brandt who's been outstanding from you know i've been listening to your guys calls for the first few games and they've been amazing but they sort of go from him down quite small and you know what's your thoughts on that yeah i mean that that sort of um that was kind of exploited. Uh, I think it was the Eastern Kentucky game where he got himself in a little bit of foul trouble. Then we had to put uh, Josh in the five spot. So it, it can be a problem in those situations there. Um, at the same time, it also, uh, depending on who they play, can make them a lot more mobile as well. So, um, you know, they'll, they'll have to cover that as best as they can. And 
that's an adjustment that uh, Angus is going to have to make this year is not getting himself into foul trouble. Um, he's a big boy, like to play aggressive, and he's just going to have to make a, an adjustment to the, the, uh, the style that the referees allow players to, uh, to play with, which is very different to the college system. And, you know, it's the, him, him being a astray, and it, it is a, an adjustment for him just like when the imports come over. Yep. They have to adjust to, you know, the new style over here. So Angus... Although he does have an understanding of the Australian way of playing, he's still going to have to make that adjustment on the court. Brad, Josh Stonker has been a guy that's really impressed Bruce and myself. And last week, a couple of weeks ago, against Hartford, threw down an enormous yeah. tip jam, which yeah. had the whole place jumping at the King School in North Parramatta. And he's a guy no one knows about. He's he been out of the country for six years. But the idea of having this Twin Towers alignment, especially with Angus having the ability to shoot the three, how critical is that going to be for the Sydney Kings this season? Well, massive, and, and this is the thing, and, and, and because they're so, uh, I guess, young in the terms of basketball and, and so unknown, it's not going to take long, especially when you start watching games on the internet like people are doing now. Um, tapes are going to be there pre-season. That's when it's really going to hit these guys. At the moment, it's all running fresh. Preseason is hit in. It's all looking great. And Damien's been doing a fantastic job. But now the time is to develop these guys that, you know, we always used to say it's like second-year syndrome. Well, that's what's going to happen after the first month for this team because everyone's going to be a little bit unsure how they go. And then you're going to have these two guys. And then it's going to be like, right, what do we do now? Now that, you know, Josh Dunker, if he's, you know, he's strong with his back to the basket or he's got an outside shot, that's going to be shut down very quickly. It's going to be the Catlers that are going to count. And that's when guys like Josh Childress and Kendrick are going to make such an impact. Yeah. And Bruce mentioned before about that. He might be young, but he's got to be such, you know, he's got to be an old head out there. So I'm really looking forward to seeing them, but it's, it's a lot of pressure. You know, they're coming up against some amazing bigs in this league right now. Perth and Melbourne, they're outstanding. It's going to be an amazing season. It, it, one of the best crops, crop of imports that we've seen probably in the last 20 to 25 years, I would say, Brad. I mean, obviously, we were all around. Bruce was the 92 you know, grand final MVP, of course. And that, to me, 1992 was the golden age. I mean, you had Bruce Bolden, Brad, you know, Robert Rose at the Magic, Dwayne McLean, Kenny McCleary, Leonard yeah. Copeland. Loggins, the all of them. Leroy yeah. Loggins was still around. Crawford, James Fisher, Crawford, I know, where Scott does it Fisher, end? Ricky Grace, you yeah. know, the greatest point guard that the NBL's ever seen. This crop of imports, on paper at least, yeah. could be something very special. Well, I see, it seems to have opened up now where I think NBA teams are looking down here and thinking, you know, you saw what happened last year in Perth. And teams are now saying, you know what, it, it's not so much about the money because you can get so much more in Europe. It's about... Let's go down to a really good program that plays similar basketball in the sense where it's up and yeah, running and yeah. it's right into the defense. Yeah. You know, give up that little bit of dollars to get that, you know, credibility in the game, you know, controlling that you need. And then you go back and you can sign like the Miami Heat did. Well, it, it allows them to come out there and, and work on a few things that's preventing them from, from getting to that next level in the NBA. NBA such as what, what Ennis has done, you know. Uh, the other side of that, too, is starting to bring characters back to the game, personalities back to the game that everyone, uh, you know, like to talk about, and it just rolls off their, off their you know, tongue when you talk about, um, you know, those type of players. So both teams sending out their starters. Kings going with Kadi, Perry, White, Tommy Gallup, and Angus Brand at the five. The Orion's going with Gillenwater, Kim, Lim, Jang, and Han. And here we go. So the Koreans control the tip. Lim looking inside, finds the big man, Gillenwater. Dumps it down low. He's dumps it outside. Oh, nice pass inside. Right. Good rotation from the Kings, and they steal it. Here comes Perry. He's got Kadidu. He's there. Perry just attacks the hoop and scores. Wow. It's a nice move. I actually thought that Jason Kadi was open with a um, left-handed bounce pass, but good finish anyway. Two to nothing with 9.30 left in the first period. They get it down low. Here's Jang working against Garlop. Kicks it out. There's that three ball in the air. Short. Gillen Water big inside, but all kings on the boards. Here's Brandt left side. Kadi harassed. Looking for Garlop. Can't find him and there's a foul. 
Jason trying the rip through that time, Brad, yeah. and uh, was fouled. Yeah, yeah. It, interesting. He looked for Tommy Garlop there on the mm. post, and Tommy looked at him and said, no, I don't want it, and they wanted to kick it sideways there and get it to the opposite side of the floor, but it was taken away. Kade finding Kendrick Perry, who's isolated one-on-one. -on -one. He's looking for Grant, top of the key, down low. Garlop with a nice seal, and there's a pushing foul. So already, guys, I guess the one thing is that the Kings are definitely looking inside in the half court. Yeah, I as mean, they should. yeah, and I think that's that's something that they um, should try to establish because they're going to have, as you can see with Kendrick, a nice running game. Uh, Madge is going to make them solid on the perimeter along with the, um, you know, Gallup being able to shoot the, the 10 to 12 footer. So Jason Gaddy jacks a three short. Rebound, Gillen Water. Here come the Orions. Uh, Gillenwater, big man, crossing over, attacks Brandt, goes into the paint and scores off the window. Well, that's just a nice move. Yeah. That's just a one-on-one -on -one move. Got his body, nice little bump there, so be yeah. able to free him up, a la Joe Ingalls for the Boomers, yeah. and a nice finish. Two apiece, 90 seconds gone. Brandt looking inside, can't find anybody. Kevin White up, fakes a three. He's got Perry, but he instead he kicks it to Tommy Garlick. Quick pass, here's Jason Kadee, nice rip through, goes hard to the bracket, is fouled. And we'll go to the line for two. I like the fact that Jason is looking to take that to the basket. You know, we spoke um, um, quite a bit about Jason needing to step his offensive game up um, a little bit more. And I think he probably ended up doing that, particularly with him being out there with Kendrick. Well, he had a fantastic offseason. He went to New Zealand and just yeah. absolutely dominated over there and then he came back and played a couple of Waratah games and yeah. in one weekend had 96 points or something yeah. like that so in 40 minute games yeah. so he, he should be feeling it and Tommy Garlop's just come off a Waratah championship and winning th and you know having 30 in the final so yeah. these guys should be really feeling good at the moment. Two or two at the line for Jason it's four to two Kevin White great defensive pressure from the purple and gold knocks it out of bounds. And see, Matt, this is where, um, you know, the Kings is going to be uh, very different this, where, this year as well. You know, they full court man-to-man -man, uh, pressure. Not actually a press, but man-to-man -man pressure, which is doesn't happen too often. Um, oh, nice little Euro step through the from Zhang, and he scores and ties it at four. Well, I do agree with Bruce because two things that'll do is, number one is, oh, that's look, a nice move. Kendrick wow. Perry all the way and wow. scoring. Six to four, and this is what we've seen in, in practice. Perry can get to the rim at will. Not only can he get to the rim, he got some hang time. And Jen going baseline on Brandt, draws the foul. Mm. So I was just going to say before, as, um, with what Bruce was saying, the, the thing that I love about the fact that they'll put him up court is two things. Number one, they'll get some easy steals and be able to get some laps, but also taking time off the clock. Yeah. And, th and then that's going to, instead of having 15 and 18 seconds to score, now they're going to have eight and six seconds, and it's a very different ball game yeah. when you have that. Yeah. They have a big Korean forward, Jang at the line for two. Makes the first. So the Koreans hanging tough in the early going, but already Kendrick Perry looks about unstoppable. I think his eyes light up every time he sees this young man, Han, try to defend him. And this is the second. Well, he just looks very confident. That's yeah. what I like. You can already tell. Look, he's just got complete control out there. There's the pressure. But the Kings break it easily. Perry Gallup wide open, steps through. Tommy Gallup, great spin move, fades, fires, nice. got it. Great move by Tom. And great pass, in transition, they yeah. burned them. And the young man, Kim, scores, and it's 8 7. Well, that's just inexcusable from the Kings. Tommy yeah. Gallup makes a light, light, nice move like he does nice. there. And no one's running back and covering the break. Yeah, especially after a made basket. You know, that, that definitely shouldn't happen. After a missed basket, yes, but a made shouldn't happen. 10-7 to the Kings. Seven minutes left in the first period here from Terrigal. Han with possession now. White picks him up. Kings are in zone. He's Jang. He's going to launch it. Garlop got a piece of that. Out of bounds. And, yeah. Out of bounds to the Orions. Yeah. Only two seconds on the shot clock. 6.48 on the game clock. Looking for an inbound pass. Good defense by the Kings. 
Finally finds Gillenwater, goes up with a shot, rattles in and out, rebound Garlett. Garlett ahead to Brandt and knocked out of bounds. Good defensive recovery that time by Hahn. That's why centres should always give the ball to a point guard. I don't know how many times I said that to Bruce. <laughs> uh, I'll tell Tommy. <laughs> Careful, he can still throw the elbows. He's right there. <laughs> I think he's saying that for, for Monday nights when we play again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ferry inbounds the ball to Gala. Back to Kenrick, who's been very dangerous early. He's going to pull it right out. Crossover move. Perry. Oh, up and under. Score it in the foul. My goodness. Nice what move. What a play. My goodness. I like how he looks to attack the basket now. I think he was hoping that someone, um, might have been Tommy Gala, to get, it, to get into an, an open spot for him to... Um, to pass it off to him, but he's just have the ability to stay somewhat balanced and to be able to get that shot yeah, off. That was a great move. He's if the Orients haven't worked out to take a step off him yet, it's not going to take Perry. long. Yeah. Oh, up and under, score it in the foul, so my quick. goodness. What they need to do now is they need to take off a step for him and say, right, let's see what that jumper's like. Yeah. Henry Perry has seven, and the Kings lead is six, 13 to seven, 6.30 left, and there's a foul here. They call a foul on... Jason can yeah. Do. yeah, look, this is going to this is exactly the same as last year, and and I know the NBL ha, are still going to be doing exactly this year. As soon as you put a hand, easiest call in the book. They will call yeah. that every time. So here's Hahn dumps it down low to Gillenwater. Gillenwater fires and short rebound off Tommy Garlop. So the Koreans will retain possession. And of course, this new rule, the 14 second reset on a missed shot, Brad. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that at all. No, I'm not either. I, I'm very surprised that's been brought in. But yeah, still. you know, it, it unfortunately it doesn't help if you've uh, had a good defensive position. Now here's the youngster Hahn launches it from three. No good. Good box out that time from Kevin White. Kings in transition. Here's Kadee. Gallup's got a nice seal. Tries to lob it into Brandt and turns it over. Here come the Koreans the other way. Oh, Perry just breaks it up. Great play. Kendrick Perry doing it at both ends right now. Yeah, Jason just had a few options there and he didn't know which one to go yeah, for. Yeah, you, you're exactly right there. Get it to a Gillenwater, he has to kick it out. Seven on the shot clock. Hahn from 18 is short. Rebound, Jason Kadee. Here come the Kings. Dee Gallard. Now Perry wide open, looks at a three up fakes, turns it down. Looking to get it inside to Gallup. Spin move, double teamed to, to Kadee, to Perry. Wide open, three ball, in and out. Gallup knocks it away, and the Kings will reset. Good possession. Shot Sorry, mate. Good possession there. Good look by Kendrick. Nice pass inside. Brant and Perry finishes. Wow. He's Kendrick quick. Perry He's putting quick. on a show. I actually didn't think there was enough space for that ball to squeeze between there. It was a he got that through a dime, isn't yeah. it? So as uh, Jason Kadee takes a rest, and we get some substitutions, but... I that play is not used anywhere near enough in the NBL, and totally I'm agreed. very surprised because totally agreed, yeah. every team and every coach talks about ball pressure and on-ball pressure, and the easiest release is just to get it to the high post and back door. Yeah. yeah. Perry with nine in the ball game. Kings lead 15 to seven. Ten on the shot clock for the Orions, and there's a foul. Angus Brandt on. Troy Gillenwater. Yeah, he put his hand on him again. Yeah. And as he comes through, and this is, again, Bruce, you spoke about it earlier, this is the thing that he's going to have to get used to. Because if they're gonna, if he gets in foul trouble, they're in trouble. Well, second, And yeah. it's his second foul, so yeah. he's replaced by Josh Dunker. His first mistake was not jumping to the ball. Yeah. And Perry steals it off the inbound. Here we go, one-on-one. -on -one. Perry Perry just floats into the lane, misses that time. Oh, no. thought it might have been a, some contact there. He's hard, wide open in transition. Three ball in and out. Rebound dunker. Now the other, sorry, the other part to that uh, that fast break there. Daniel Joyce was on the left side, could have dished it off. Uh, Perry getting a pick from Dunker, and there's a foul, so that will put the Orions over the limit. And that's two. That's the first personal foul, so there'll be two at the line when they come out of the timeout. And, Bruce, your uh, impression of the, the first uh, five minutes of this game? Well, there's Kendrick's game. You know, he's he's been very impressive. Yeah, you know, I just like this. I like his speed, and he really looked to attack. Uh, and the the more the players, his teammates around him, adjust and get into the right spot, because 
teams will get to a stage where they're going to give him that that space like Brad has spoke about and he's going to have to make it, the adjustment to that his teammates are going to have to make the adjustment by getting to the to the uh, to the open uh, gaps there but so far very impressed yeah I, I think you put that perfectly teams have to adjust to him and what I think has happened a lot in the past few years and Sydney Kings imports included is imports had to adjust to our team play yeah, yeah. and I think that's really tough for an import that you know, when you come to play anywhere in the world, and Bruce, you'd know that better than anyone, an import comes and teams should adjust to that import because you're bought into the team to be that player. And I think teams and, and even imports in the last gone, you know, years gone by for the Kings, they had to fit in and it always felt to me that they weren't playing their natural game. Yeah. He looks like he's playing his natural game tonight. He's yeah. getting out. I agree he should have given that up there in that last pass. Yeah. But outside of that, you guys come with me and I'll carry you. And I like that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And the thing with that, though, you know, players don't have to change their game. They just have to adjust. But the, bit, and there is a difference there. They've, they've all grown up playing that type of yeah. game. I know when I was growing up, there's always that one guy that you're playing with. It's yeah. an import and stuff, and you adjust to it. You know, yeah. for when I was playing with the Kings, it was yourself. It was Isaac Burton. It's, you know, guys like that. You play around it. Yeah. For the young man from Youngstown State University at the line for two, 11th in the NCAA in scoring as a senior with 21 points a game. Makes the first. He's got double figures now with 10. Four of six from the field. And has proven himself to be basically unstoppable. Yeah. Which it's big, it's not, not really a surprise against this smaller, and they're not yeah. used to that, that kind of talent. Yeah. One of the things that's been uh, commented on him is that he's a, he's a has great character. He's a good guy, and that's important. Perfect at the line, 17 to 7. King's lead is double figures. And Kendrick it looks like he's going to play extended minutes in his first game for the Kings. Here's the other import, Charles Garcia, against Travel. Got away with it, and there's Ooh. a foul dunker. It's a nice move. He's got some good quickness out of Seattle University, Charles Garcia. And he has been well-traveled, Bruce. He's played in Bahrain most recently, spent time in Europe. We're... Um we're going to get a, get a chance to watch this again, I think. And, and, Bruce, I'm interested in your comments. You look at Josh here. The first thing he does is see how he's leaning forward. Yeah. So that means his step look like he, he's just one step behind. And it, and if that's going to happen, you're going to cause a foul there. What, yeah, he should be stepping off, shouldn't he? Well, he should be stepping off and also um, forcing him to the baseline. Yeah. Right. Where he re restrict his, uh, his space of where he can go. Second um, free throw. Misses rebound. Dunk up. 17 to 8, 4.16 left in the first period here. Perry with 11. Surprised they're not double teaming him yet. He's just going to attack the hoop, kicks it out, almost stole and knocked away by Hahn. Five on the shot clock. Oh, check that, it's nine on the shot clock. 4.05 left in the opening period here from Terrigal. Perry all the way out to Garlop beyond three, but now back to Perry. Joyce to Gallup. He's got to launch it with three on the shot clock. It's no good. And it's knocked out of bounds by the Koreans. Sydney possession from the side. Yeah, a little bit of uh, miscommunication there. The Kings have to be aware. You get 14 seconds left in that baseline. And, and really, Tommy had to throw one up there. And the Kings are lucky to get that ball back. And this is where the experience comes in. And Bruce, you keep talking about it. Someone's just got to be able to say, right, this is what we've got. Yeah. And, and teams have got to run that eight-second shot clock, yeah. basically. Eight seconds left. You've got to have that play. Yeah. Garlop with 10 on the shot clock. Looking for the rip through. Doesn't find it. Kicks it out to Perry. He's going to create behind the back. Tommy Garlop. Three ball in the air. No good. Back iron. Big rebound. Daniel <laughs> Joyce. Well, Daniel Joyce, the 10th man for the Sydney Kings this year. Well, that's what he has to give him. He's very long, Daniel, and, he he's, and he's athletic. And, and he has to be able to do that and finish on the break when he gets it. Oh, good oh, step nice. through by Garlop, and he scores really off the window nice. with a left hand. Tommy Garlop with six points in the game, and the Kings lead is 11. 19 to 8. 3.15 left in the first period. Garcia looking to operate against Tommy. Balls his way into the basket, short off the window. Out of bounds, knocked off Kevin White. Good and there's two examples. That, that defense from Tom is exactly what you were just saying, what yeah. he should be doing. Yeah. Don't let him go middle. Don't let him get a spin and make him make a tough shot. And he That's missed. Exactly and right. They were unlucky not to get the ball back, but yeah. it was good defense by Tommy. Yeah. Uh, here's Hahn quickly to Garcia. 
Cross court pass three in the air. That's long. Offensive rebound to Jang in the game. To Han. They launch another triple and they get it this time yeah, you finally. Couldn't, you couldn't give him two open yeah, looks. Very rest rare you miss two in a row in these type. 19 to 10, 2.45 left in the opening period. Mm. King's looking for that high low action again. Bruce yeah, it was open so there too. I don't think Josh had looked at it. He had already had his mind up that he was going to pass Kendrick. Kendrick misses off the iron. And here's Garcia, step through, fade away, short. Green's forcing up a couple of tough shots in the last minute or so. Cody Ellis into the ball game now, finds Perry now, Dunker and now White on the left side. Garlet, they're giving him all kinds of room. He's looking to go one-on-one, -on -one. he's just going to launch it, foul line, jumper nice good. Work. Well, I've got to give the Onions the, the credit because what they've done now <laughs> is they, they are making sure... That's a nice drive nice all the way. Nice drive by Hahn all the way to the rack. Not great defense. But what they've done now is if, if you're watching the defensive stance now and the Kings will come down and there's a minute 55 left, um, they're starting to take a step off. Yeah. And they are making the last five shots by the Kings have been outside jump shots. Oh, Perry attacks the hoop and scores. Oh. 13 for Kendrick Perry in the opening period. And that's what happens if you don't. And again, in transition, the Orions, and they knock down another triple. That's three. And time out, Damian Cotter, head coach of the Kings, not happy about the last couple of possessions. Kings have been burned in transition. They've That's given exactly up a, what a pair of triples. Time out, Sydney. Well, you know, you get Kendrick to go to the basket and finish strong. But then, and as you can see in the replay there, but he needs to have a safety. He can't chase the actual point guard that guarded him. You know, he's recovering from getting up off the baseline. And I think this is where the, the communication comes, and this will be interesting to see how, how Damien approaches this, because you can tell that he wants the guards pushing up the floor, but as we all know, and, and for basketball lovers out there, the, the, the opposite guard is the one that has yeah. to protect the rim, yeah. and he has to wait for the bigs on his team to get back to release him. But yeah. if you've got your opposite guard pushing up the floor, they're going to get layups like they're getting. Yeah. So a, a, an interesting adjustment here, and you know the great Brian Gorgian, who we know, he, he was always, whoever, it, it's the one and two, and he used to call it dog and deep. Yeah. And whoever is the one that shoots, the other one's the deep. Yeah. And that's not happening at the moment. Yeah. 23-14 with 1.33 left. And Damien very laying down the law, just very firmly in the uh, timeout. And he's coming. He's a rookie head coach in the NBL, obviously. Yeah. And he's come in with a very strong vision. So, Brad, I, I guess, you know, your thoughts on, on Damien so far? Yeah, very impressive. Um, I, I haven't had a lot to do with him. Um, I've spoken to him a number of times, but I've spoken to a number of the players that I have relationships with in the Kings, and everyone speaks extremely high, highly of him from the board down. And that's number one battle dumb. Uh, that, that's not easy. Very so he, he has been extremely impressive. Dunker harassed by the youngster Han, finding Ellis. Hasn't taken a shot as yet. I uh, see the Orioles have gone to a zone. They're, and they're jumping it's out of everything. scrambling zone as well. Here's Daniel Joyce. Three ball in the air, long. Rebound Han, and the Koreans are off and running. Big surprise. Here's. It's Lim on the ball game now, finds Garcia in the low block, going to work against Dunker, looking for a dunk himself. But going to have to keep his hands off the man. Well, again, the hand-checking guys, and yep. we talked about this. Yep. Big, big um, key for the NBL referees last season with their hand-checking. It looks like it's going to be a, a point of emphasis again this season. Yeah. Good little battle between the two. Um, you know, a learning curve for uh, Josh is to, to just to keep banging with him and prevent him from getting a good post-up position. Well, I think that's the key, what you're saying, Brute, where, you know, where he's getting the catch. Yeah. And at the moment, he's getting a catch where he's comfortable and yeah. can make a move. And, yeah. you know, he, he needs to be a step or two away from that, which is such a big difference for yeah. a guy posting up. Yeah. Missed the first one more to come. And long. that's long two. Rebound. Cody Ellis, here come the Kings with Kadee. Quick pass ahead of the field to mm. White back to Kadee, and they're going to set up a play. 15 on the shot clock. He's Ellis in the post. Ellis goes up strong and is blocked. Rejected by Garcia. Got a piece of it. 
Here's the big man just loping down the court. Looking for Garcia, can't find him. Instead, it comes, the King's got a three on one here. Kadee to White, White layup, good. A good transition that time from the Sydney Kings. Got a good three on one and an easy layup for Kevin. Well, last two times, I do like what Jason Kadee is doing. He's kicking the ball up early to give his teammates an option to look at the rim and do something. 25-14, 15 seconds left in the period. Here's Garcia, crosses over, spin move, Ooh. great move, lays nice. it up and in. Nice. Uh, he's got some quicks, 25-16, yeah. six seconds left. Here's White, wide open, corner three ball, and it's long. Rebound, Garcia, there's one second left. They're going to throw it the length of the court, and it's short. And that's it, that's the end of the first period here. With your score, the Mighty Might Sydney Kings, 25. The Goyang Orions, 16. We're going to take a 30-second break. We'll be right back with you. Stay with us. You're listening to Sydney Kings Basketball on the Sydney Kings Radio Network. Sports Stadium, just going to run through some quick stats for you. Kings shooting 53% from the field. They're leading the rebound count 11 to 7. They're 25 points led by Kendrick Perry, 5 of 8 from the field. He's thir got threes, 13 and 2 steals. Uh, Tommy Gallup has 8. Jason Gede, 2. And Kevin White has 2. For the Orions, they shoot just 41% from the field, 7 of 17 in the first period. Uh, they're led by looking at this, uh, Kim Dusu has six and uh, both um, Yang and Charles Garcia have three apiece. Uh, this one turnover from the Kings, Bruce, which is impressive in that first quarter. Yeah, you know, considering that uh, they were looking to push it off the court, the thing that um, the Orioles are not doing, they're not putting too much pressure on that, that's causing turnovers and the Kings have been pretty, pretty composed. All right, once again, just a reminder, stay tuned for our special Halftime guest, Eric Barrett, who's listening to us right now, <laughs> listening to the YouTube feed right now. We'll be talking about his walk to over the Harbour Bridge for charity. And we've got, looks like clock, clock hasn't started. No. Yeah, you know, the score bench a little slow on the early uptake here. The Kings have been in pre-season all week up here. The last thing they want is this clock not to run. <laughs> 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 uh, Whilst they want to play, they also want to go home. <laughs> it looks like that's been sorted out. Just take a second off the clock. It's an interesting time for the Kings. I mean, you know, for Damien, the, the scores are relevant. That's, that's not what he's looking at. He, he would have put these, these guys and their team through a lot of paces this week, and he'll be trying to get certain things out of this, yeah. like offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds, how they run their sets, good looks like a three oh. like that. So very interesting times. Oh, Tommy Gala had it knocked away, and Kendrick Perry has called for the foul on no. Yeah, I agree with you, and, and they, he'll be expecting a couple of things in place leading up to the uh, the Blitz as well. Yeah, well, the Blitz is going to be a great tournament, and I know you know we're all lucky enough that we'll be up there as well, so I'm really looking forward to that and to have all the teams playing. And Matt, yeah. you said it, those imports, this is going to be phenomenal. Yeah. There's no with the ball. I dump it down low to the big man. Gillen Water. Looked like he travelled there. Yes, Bruce got away with it. Threw it away to Jason Kadee. Here come the Kings. Three on three. Kadee with that trademark floater. Misses. And the Kings can't retain possession. Here come the Orion sprinting down the floor. Or kicks it out. There's a look at a three and that's an air ball. So no throws up an air ball. 
You know, you don't want to be harsh on a new guy coming in, um, but Daniel Joyce needs to do better. That's the second time he has gone for an offensive rebound, and the ball's been around where he is, but he's jumping way too early. Mm -hmm. he, he needs to be able to finish that. Yeah, Damien Cotter needs him to be able to help with that. Maybe he just needs to adjust with his timing. Oh, nice. Nice move inside, and Cody Ellis has called for the foul. Excuse me, draws the foul, I should say. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, you know what? I like I liked the fact that he looked to penetrate, you know, where he's just not solely relying on the jump shot, which he I had agree. a good look just uh, just a moment ago, and he uh, ended up missing him. I, I couldn't agree more, Bruce. So we'll see the replay here. The last time he shot that, that good pull through, he used yeah. the body. Yeah. And that's a smart basketball brain. Yeah. I've just missed the three. Let me get to the free throw line. I'll get a couple of looks and now the next one. So yeah. great work from Cody Ellis there. Two or two at the line for Cody. 27-16. A minute gone in the second period here from Terrigal. Big man Gillowater just attacks Garlet Hutt straight to the rack. Yeah, that's strength. And that's a tough move, but no help for Tommy that time. Well, that's one of the things. If, if there's one thing I want to point out is the fact that the Kings still haven't uh, established that split line help. Uh, and I know that's, that's something that um, doesn't happen too often these days, but I think it's still something that's very important to team defense. Yeah, I agree with you, Bruce. And it, and it also concerns me that, you know, you look at this Orions team and they're not what I would class as a big team. And, and they're manhandling some of our bigs at the moment. And, and, you know, we've got Matt Knight sitting in Perth and these teams in Melbourne and kick it and stuff, you know. There's going to be some big boys we're playing against. Kadeem misses off the window and here comes Lee. And the big man, Gillowater, just jacks it from 18 and switches Nice it. move. So, that was a classic example there. He just went to the basket. Tommy gave him some space and he pulled it up. Yeah. Kevin Water has four and the lead is just seven, 27 to 20. And now Kadi trying to pull through baseline is fouled by Kim. That'll be the Orion's second team foul of the period. Kevin White comes out to replace Daniel Joyce. We do also have to realise there's potentially another 40 points a game not playing for the Kings at the moment. <laughs> very, very true. Oh, a lot of physical stuff going on inside with Kevin White. He's galloping the block. Gouted by Gillenwater. Spins, fades, fires, and no good. Tapped out. Kadi loses it. And he's, Zhang picks it up. Kicks it to Gillenwater inside over Ooh, the small. White boy, scored in the foul. That's just strength. Nothing Kevin can do about that. Nothing at all. Gillenwater, a big, powerful yeah. man at six foot seven, just overpowered Kevin White, and a couple of baskets for for Troy Gillenwater. He's now got six with one to come. And you can see Damien's made that adjustment straight away. He's had to bring Angus back in yeah. because this man is dominating down yeah. low at the moment. Now Angus needs to play smart so he don't pick up that third foul as well. Is the re oh, I thought we were going to see a little replay there of just how tough he was down low. I've got the finger saying it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Great friends at VPA Productions tonight, helping us with the live stream. Here we go. Here we go, just too strong. Yeah. 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 There's so, nothing really Kevin could do. No. The only thing you can hope for, and unfortunately I've been in that situation my whole life, is just foul early and don't let him get the ball off. But yeah. he's just so strong. Yeah. There's not a lot you can do. Uh, just had a bit of an issue with the stats bench. It's been fixed. So Gillen Waters at the line for the end one. And it's short. Rebound Brandt, but it looks like Kings were in too early. So Gillen Water will have another opportunity to come wow. further into this lead. And from this which angle, was 11 and now it was 5. Now yeah, it's down to 5. This, this angle. We're not, this is not like a Boomers versus Angola, I hope. <laughs> Gillen Water makes it. Three point play for Troy. He's got 7. And it's 27 23. So the Orions making a run here. Down 4. 7.47 left to half time. Grant looking for Kadee. Gallup trying to set a seal and there's a foul. Gallup is getting a little uh, frustrated at the moment because Angus got the ball right up top and he didn't actually look inside to, to establish that high-low action. He went to the 45 to get a, a different angle and that should have been the second option. He yeah. had a word, just had a word to Angus too, Bruce. So yeah. Making him... Uh, Understand, he's getting the ball and he's in position. Here's Perry, 10 on the shot clock. Garlic, quick pass, Kadee, nice pass inside and 
Gillenwater rejects Grant. What a play. Yeah, you know the interesting thing about that one was Gallup did the same exact thing Angus did, which didn't look to the, to the middle because Angus was wide open as well. He'll only have that happen to him a couple of times before he goes up with two hands and just goes hard and throws exactly it down. Right. And pressure up the floor from the Kings. The Ryans break it. Kim. Here's Gillenwater. Gillenwater from 18, and that's long this time. Rebound Gala. Kings are out running. Koreans are back. Here's Perry. He's got 13. Jab step. Goes into the paint. Fades. Gets into the paint. And Boy. So quick. Yeah, he's got some, some very good quickness on him. Draws the foul and will go to the line for two. And not only, um, you know, directly to the basket. That was a quick move, period, just with his, with his uh, crossover. Here's that beautiful block. Yeah. Yeah, that's just unfortunately going up a little bit too soft there. Yeah, he should have went up like a master. That's the young man at the line. who has been very impressive in that first period with 13 points. Makes it. Oh, I just love the, the, um, the presence of him. That's why, I mean, you know, we go back a year um, and we called this game a year ago and, and the new Sydney Kings import that they had, he, he, he didn't have the presence like this. And, that, no. and that's, that's a confident player. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly. Kendrick with 15. Kings back out by 6. 29-23. That Orion's on the break. Looking at a 3. Turns it down. Now Perry with a foul. And Ooh, very unlucky. I think that might have been a little bit of a push-off from... Probably, probably didn't have uh, we get a replay of it. This is the play before. Here's where uh, you were saying, Bruce, about the um, how he's just so tough going. And for young basketballers watching, see how he hesitated there because he was setting his man up to yeah. come at him yeah. so he could take him off the dribble, and that was really nice. Yeah. Floor wipers doing their job. Youngsters from up here in Terrigal. And here we go. The Ryans will inbound. 16 seconds on the shot clock. 6.58 in the game to half time. Lee with the ball. With Perry right there. Oh, Kevin White fouls the three-point shooter. Kim and the Cardinals sin. Don't foul a jump shooter. He did throw back his head. It was very theatrical, but yeah, yeah. he earned a trip to the line for three. I think Kevin was a little... Um upset from the from the screen that he thought might have been the illegal one. Here's the replay now. Whew. It was actually hand, wasn't it? It's it, the actual hand, but they classify that as, as a foul. Look at it. Oh, Ooh. wow. He didn't touch him at all, really, no, did maybe he? maybe not. What fantastic TV. <laughs> Instant replay on the... Video on the never signal. lies. Video <laughs> never lies. Yeah, Bruce and I are used to this radio caper. I think we want more of the uh, television. Ah, uh, no question. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Kim of the line for three. Ooh. And banks it in, if you don't mind. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. We don't want to see that as a replay, well, thanks. <laughs> yeah. We'll see if that was deliberate if it happens again. Second free throw. Yep. He, he looked to bank and he made it. That's how he shoots his free throws. So We've got a Rupert Sapwell. We've got a Rupert Sapwell in the house. <laughs> we do. No, he doesn't have enough back here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Rupert, if you're watching. <laughs> oh, they steal it, and there's all oh, out of bounds. So they doubled Perry quickly. And I really like the adjustments that the Orions have made. Yeah. You know, the Kings came out and was bang, bang, bang on the back of Kendrick. They've sagged off him now. He's had a couple of jumpers that don't look like they're going to drop. And they're really starting to play some good defense there, which getting right back into the game. Good test here for the Kings. Here's Perry getting a pick from Brandt, looking for the give and go, can't find it quite quickly. Jason Kadee, baseline three, yes. Good look. Good offense. Yeah. Good offense. They got a nice on ball, and then just let the ball do the work. 32 25, 6 24 left to half time. Here's the impressive Gilliwall left hand drive, just attacks the hoop, splits the two kings, and in Angus Brandt, I believe. No, yeah. maybe Tommy Gallup. Oh, I think they're going to call no, it on they Angus. Did. They did call it on Angus Bruce, and, I gotta and say, that's his I, third wow. personal foul. Yeah, I agree. He, he he showed his hands, but he just moved his hip down low. I thought I thought Tommy Gallup might have got his hand in there, and that's why the ball came out, but that's his third. And he's going to have to sit, replaced by Josh Donker. And once again, Angus really hasn't asserted himself, Bruce. Very similar. Here we just go. Look just watch the hit down low there. Yeah, there you go. Just down low, and that's what Bruce. You mentioned it before. You just got to give that. Yeah. Got to get those feet moving. Yeah. 
And part of the problem, too, is, is it, he's allowing him to go middle where he has more space, forcing base to restrict his space. And then you talk about split line and then yeah. you get help. You're right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really a simple game, and it's as simple as that. Dylan Water, 2 of 2 at the line, 32 27, 6 20 left to half time. So the Orions giving the Kings a nice little challenge here in the preseason. Gallup quickly, Kadi, another three in the air. That's short this Ooh, time. Good look. The good ball movement from the Kings and Jason just short off the iron. Well, they've just got to keep going at this, the Kings. Their on ball is really oh, doing some nice work for them. Yeah. Huge travel then, yeah, got yeah. away with it. Did Kim. Now he goes into the paint. Right hand shot, no good. Big rebound, Gallup. Here come the Kings and Kadi loses it out of bounds. Well, that was a bit sloppy coming out of that, uh, Bruce. Yeah, I think Jason was sort of expecting it, but then it was behind him, so he had to kind of catch it and spin and just didn't have control of it. Not a lot he could do there. It wasn't, no. it wasn't a great heads-up pass. Yeah. There's Lee with the ball, gets a pick, gets it back. Gillenwater now from three, and that's short. And rebound, Kevin White, good box out. And Goyang, Ryan's call for the foul. White will travel 90 feet and shoot two. So it's interesting, uh, just your thoughts, guys, on Perry and Kadi playing side-by-side, -side, two point guards, and giving Coach Cotter the versatility or able to run Magic the three, go small or big as the uh, situation dictates. Yeah, Bruce and I have chatted a lot about this, actually, in the off-season, and um, it, it's going to be interesting because, in theory, you, you, you're going to have Kendrick at the one, Ben Madgen at the two, and then Childress at the three. Yeah. So, um, and, and Jason Kadi is needed to play. He, he, is, he has proven that he's a good player in this league, and this is going to make it a little bit difficult there for, you know, to, for, to find minutes in a 40-minute game for a Kevin White. Not that he doesn't deserve minutes, where do you fit him in? You've got an NBA player, a great point guard, an Australian representative. Oh, Gillen Ward, just two huge steps into the paint, yeah. scores. He's got 12, and it's a three-point ball game. And now here's Dunker, wide open layup. Yeah, good run. But good look from Jason Kadi, found Dunker, and he scored off the window, and it's 34-29, 5.22 left to halftime. Lee finds Sang, and now no. And now an offensive foul. Moving screen against Gillenwater. No, they've called it on Lim. King's possession, 5.08 left to half time. They're up five as Garcia comes off the bench. That's interesting. I don't know what the rules are in Korea. I suspect it's one import at a time because they seem to be just rotating the yeah, imports in I, and out. I don't know. I know I know in China, and I don't know if it still is this way, but you are not allowed to play both imports for four quarters. So you're allowed to play them. They're only allowed to play uh, like two quarters at the same time. Mm. So that could be possible the same reason here. You're right. Perry up fakes a three. Good defense that time. Stops him there. He's Gallup four, and the shot clock loses it. Fumbles it. Turnover, here's Garcia. As the shot clock buzzer goes off inadvertently. Garcia going baseline, Gallup holding position, slaps at it. Garcia gets it back short. Good defense, Gallup that time. Here yeah. come the Kings. Duncan looking to establish position. They can't find him. Here's Perry, wide open. Three ball in the air, yes. Nice shot. Kendrick Good Perry has another one. He's got 18 in the ball game. Great ball movement. Here's Lee with the ball, getting a pick from Garcia. Now he's going to launch a long three, and it's good. Tough shot. Huge long bomb from the youngster Lee, and it's back to five. 37-32, four minutes left to half time here from Terrigal. Nat McQuaid, Bruce Bolden, and Brad Rosen with you on Sydney Kings TV tonight. White exploring baseline, but they shut it down. Here's Perry, who has 18. They're going to double team him. So gives it to Gee. Somebody's open. Gallup looks at a three, launches it. Yes! Nice shot. Tommy Gallup hits a tray. Back to back threes from the Kings, 40 to 32. It's good spacing in that particular set there. And, and obviously. Oh, Kendrick Perry just says, 
Boy. Long arms. He has a 6'6 wingspan. He is very, very long. Well, I tell you what, if he'd, have got, if he'd have recovered that basketball, I'd have been standing oh, up. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was so, look, I was, all, a, I was getting ready to expect the highlight film I there. was already, you know, spinning, let's get a replay. That was, <laughs> that was coming. Oh. He has 6'6 six, six wingspan and a 42-inch vertical leap. Yeah. And every bit of that was used in the warm-ups. Oh, he was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, just a quick uh, warning to the Kings fans. When, when the season does start and he get out in the fast break by himself, oh, dumps it off. expect um, some serious highlights. And get there early for the warm-ups. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Duncan missed the jumper off a, what was a nice dish from Kendrick. Kings back in his zone now. Garcia rejected by nice Garland. Speed. Those long arms of Tommy, but they get it back. Young man Lee just Ooh. hit a three, and Kendrick Perry reaches behind, and they'll call that every time. And Kings are in the penalty, so that's two shots to Lee. And Perry is going to take the seat, replaced by Daniel Joyce. And the Kings have got Kadee, Joyce, White, Dunker, and Garland. And it will be Lee at the line for two. He's got just the three points off that monster triple he hit a minute or so ago. Makes the first. Uh, Kings will play the Orions on Wednesday. And we'll be there for that one as well. Again with an audio and video stream, he missed the second. It's 40 to 33. Kadee to Duncan now quickly to Joyce. Quick ball movement by the Kings. Gallup, good sail inside. Duncan nice. scores. And that's that high-low action Bruce we talked about. Well, you know, it's the first time uh, um, in the game thus far, which I'm surprised they haven't um, had a few more. Nine-point lead, 42-33 to I the Kings. I think we're going to get a replay of this. I know we've only got two minutes 44 here, but that was just beautiful ceiling from Duncan. Oh, cross-court pass inside to Sang. Ruddles in and out and in. So, I check that was Lim. 42-35. So, breakdown defensively on the weak side for the Kings. Here's White going baseline. They double-team him quickly. Gallup now to Kadee. Someone's open. Here's Joyce. Down low to Duncan. Going to work against Garcia. Duncan just pulls his way to the basket. Can't score it, but strong move from Josh Duncan Bruce. It was, and, and surprisingly he was open even before that. But um, the players, yeah, they reluctant to, to have a look at the basket because they're so focused on making that next pass. Look As you can see, he's open there for a yeah, good high-low from, uh, from yeah, Tommy. But previous play. Absolutely. Yep. And what was beautiful there, he set him up there yeah. four seconds before he got the ball. Yeah. And to Tommy's credit, he looked at him as well and yeah. got him the ball. So great offense. Cody Ellis is going to come in to replace... Tommy Garlop. Tommy, as usual, Bruce is uh, doing the job. 11 yeah. points and six rebounds. Yeah. He was working on a triple double the last game we played against the University of <laughs> Harvard at half, half time. Yeah. 15.7 rebounds, five assists. Yeah, no, he's he, been so productive, hasn't yes. he? Yes, I think he's, he's very conscious of stepping his game up to, to an, uh, that next level and, and uh, showing more leadership as well. Well, the Kings are playing a lot. What I've noticed here tonight as well is their four-man, which is, which is him and, and also Cody, are out on the perimeter. So he is going to get that opportunity to get a shot off, and I'll be interested because that's one of Cody's strengths. Yeah. The next time we go down offensively, you will see an on-ball, and it really comes through the four-man at the top. So I'll be interested to see what Cody does with that scenario. They go hard to the rack, get inside the Garcia, and he flushes it with two hands. Yeah, well, Brad, he's speaking about that, how they, they go uh, a lot smaller without Angus out there. They have a small lineup at the moment with Cody playing the four and Josh playing the five. No basket. Foul is called. And that will send the Kings to the line for two more shots, leading by six. It also puts a bit of pressure, and we're seeing that nice move from the last time when he got two free throws for Dunker, but it also puts a lot of pressure on your four-man. And, Bruce, you made a career of it. You've got to make a big decision when you get the ball. Because the first, you know, when you get the ball, it's always like, look at the basket, what are you going to do? And then it's like, right, do I go left, do I go right? Have I got a handoff? Am I looking down low? It's a big decision to make, and, and, and you've got to be experienced to do that. Yeah, and, and the first thing you do is look at the basket. You know, we, we teach, you know, the under-12s 
to be a triple threat, that number one thing is to look at the basket. Joyce is one or two at the line, and this is a three. Here come the Kings. Today, exploring in transition. Corinne's a back, but he's Dunker inside, and it's stolen. Great play from the Orions. Here they come. Kings are back. Garcia traveled. Offensive foul. Call it what you will. It's an offensive foul. And I was actually surprised that um, Orient player actually passed him that ball with two Kings players sitting right there in the middle, and Jason being one of them. Terrible pass. Yeah. Absolutely terrible pass. He gave him no other option. I thought it was a tough call as a, as a charge, but if anything, yeah. it probably would have been a travel in the end. Yeah. But you can't call a foul on that because that's just awful offense. Yeah. 123 left here, 44-37, Kings possession. And an entertaining first half. Here's Ellis going baseline now and reverses it up. No good, but there's a foul on Garcia. Hand-checking foul, and he looks quizzically at his coach. <laughs> Puts his hands up, who me? Nonetheless, it'll be Cody Ellis, of course, yeah. the son of Perth Wildcat legend Mike Ellis, one of the great Perth Wildcats in history, has his number retired at Perth Arena. Free throw is good from Cody. He's got just three points in the ball game with one to come. Second free throw up and good. 46-37 with a substitution here coming into the game is Lim for the Orions. Kings lead by nine, One fifteen left to half time. Sydney showing some full court pressure and now they call it off. Garcia looking for someone to pass to. Yeah, I think the, uh, the coach wanted him to pass the ball to the guard that sprinted that right lane there. Oh, another travel gets away yeah. with it. Here's Garcia guarded by Dunker. Mm. Left hand dribble and he's fouled. Again, the hand check. I think, and again, he's going middle, um, Matt, which is where, again, you have to force him base where you have some help. Dunker's third foul. So both Dunker and Brandt have three fouls. Now the Kings are going even smaller. Tommy Garlip's going to play the five for the one minute remaining. As we Look at the both hands here come up. And as soon as he lifts both he's arms here and right there, bang. Yeah. That's that's just going to be called every time. Yeah, and and you know, unfortunately, Josh is telling him, okay, your your option is middle. You don't want his option to be middle. Garcia made the first free throws. One more to come. I'd actually be interested, Bruce, if that's. I I 100% agree with you because every time they're forced middle, it's done nothing but problems. Yeah. But is, is that the team rules? And yeah, if it is, it's an interesting one. Yeah. Good rebound by Tommy Garlop. That's his sixth. He's Kadee. He finds. Ellis Gallup double team and too long yeah, in the key three. that time. Three second violation, turns the ball over. It was a good idea, but um, yeah. good help defense that time from the Orions. Well, he got it in there. He just needed to make a move straight away. Don't don't look around anywhere, just attack. At the very least, it would be a missed shot, but a close one. Time out here, guys. 46 seconds left. So we're looking at two possessions. What are we expecting in this last uh, 46 seconds? Well, I think, I think first off is, um, you know, obviously the Orions have called a timeout here. They're, they're going to look for a play, and, yeah. and, and, and knowing the teams, they are, they're, they're going to look to penetrate and kick. And if in doubt, they've got a real big height advantage, and they should be looking to go inside, especially with the, with the Kings being in foul trouble. And for the Kings, well, the on-ball's working for them. I, I would just stay with the on-ball. It looks good. When they get the ball through the four-man, kick it opposite, get on-balls, continual, and then just look to get out and run. I wouldn't be surprised if the Orange would probably look to, uh, if it's a May basket, just to press up to see what uh, what happens out of it. Yeah, good option. So we've got a mad rush for the uh, exits here. <laughs> Some of the crowd trying to get in ahead of the uh, the rush to the canteen for <laughs> the halftime <laughs> drinks. They sell really good hot chips here. Everyone's <laughs> rushing for the hot is? chips. <laughs> <laughs> If you haven't had terrible hot chips, you haven't lived. <laughs> and just to, just to my boss, no, I have not had hot chips today. But I do appreciate the ones you bought me and ate half of them. Oh, no problem, Rach. <laughs> my pleasure. Uh, Sorry, Rach. <laughs> I'll tell you what, call me Wes and leave me out at mess. <laughs> He's Switzerland. That's it. Here we go. Orion possession. I'm letting the ball drip, bounce a little bit before picking it up. Saving as much time as possible. Now they just launch it. Trade! He's got it! 
So yeah. that's Chun with a three. It's 46-41. Well, interesting because they came out in a half-court trap, went back into a zone and gave up a first pass three. Yeah. That's not going to impress the coach. No. Gallup quickly to Kadi gets a pick from Gallup. Now finds White. And they steal it. Poor pass from White, but he gets it back. Finds Tommy Gallup. Gallup goes inside. Left-hand shot is good. Nice Tommy touch. Gallup doing the job. He reminds me of David Stiff, the way he's got those little <laughs> one-leggers now. He's got 13 in the game. Joining Perry is the Kings in double figures. And Garcia, that's an offensive foul. He just whacked Kevin White yeah, with an elbow did. in the throat. Yeah. With that looked like it hurt Cody. I think we're going to get a replay of this. And let's see. Uh, so Kevin White, I think, just if we ever look at the replay. And... <gasps> Let's just have a look here. No, it was Cody, you're right. Bang! Yeah, he's trying to establish, um, you know, post up, but, you know, raise his hand. Cody Ellis. Call me old school, but oh, maybe a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know, Bruce, you, that's play on. Do you know what I mean? There's two guys, they're going at it. I, just that little extended of the left arm, I'll probably give it a little yeah, bit more. That's right. But, you know, he's just a big man playing. Let yeah. the big man play. Yeah. But, but the, the other, you know, they're the, calling it all over, so you yeah, got to yeah. The other side of that, you, you know, and, and no disrespect, you don't classify Cody as a big man. Yeah. You see, so he had to add a little bit of Oscar into it. Yeah. But he did extend that left arm. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. just, I, I don't know, like, yeah. you know, just let him play. It's not like it's, it's not going to be a score. He's still got to make a move to get that basket. So let the player make the play. Yeah. Only a minute, a second and a half left on the clock here so it'll be interesting what sort of play they, they draw up really it's quick pass and then just a halfway half court shot but we've seen we've seen those knocked in in the past <laughs> yeah. so here we go White's going to try throw and throw it, it. Uh, throw it throws it to Ellis Ellis is going to have to launch it from halfway good puts look. it up and no good nice out of bounds play though they got a good look at it and that's the end of the first half here from Terrigal with your score the Mighty Might Sydney Kings 48, the Goyang Orions 41. And first to Bruce, your thoughts on that first half? Well, the Kings came out blazing pretty good, and uh, Kendrick led them um, all the way in that first quarter. And uh, Orions made an adjustment and, and clawed it back to a, uh, a seven point game. Um, I'm expecting the second half to uh, start at that same pace, and I'm sure the Orions will, will make some adjustments. I think the Kings. Need to just have a little bit more patience in offense. Um, get that high-low established. And Brad? Yeah, I think I think Damien, I mean, we'll, we'll talk Kings, obviously. I think Damien would be very happy with the first half. Uh, I just don't think he'd be ecstatic about the defensive pressure that the bigs have played. Yeah. Both his bigs have got three fouls each, and, and I'm sure it's been drummed into them that he needs them in that game. And, and I think the fouls that they've got... You can live with some fouls, but I guess you could say little sloppy fouls. You know, they're, they're just fouls that you just can't give up because they're the ones that hurt you late in the game. Now he's got to sit you down and you can't play. But all in all, you know, they're, they're up by seven. They've had a big preseason week. They're without Ben Madgen and Josh Childress, who's, like we said, 40 points. You know, you've got to look at where they're at at the moment. But all in all, very positive outcome, good half for the Kings. So just quickly before we go to our halftime break, Kings lead again 48-41. Kendrick Perry leads the way. He's got 18 points on 6 of 9 shooting. He's a perfect 5 of 5 from the free throw line. He also has 3 steals. Tommy Gallup, the only other king in double figures. He's been exceptional once again. 13 points, 7 rebounds and 2 assists for Tom. Uh, for the, the, the Kings shooting 47% from the field. Just 3 of 11 at the 3 point line. And they're 13 of 17 at the free throw line. For the Orions, uh, Troy Gillenwater really went to work in that second period. He's now got 13 points two rebounds and two steals. Uh, Charles Garcia with six and um, Kim Dussault with six as well. Koreans are shooting 47% identical to the Kings. They're uh, two of seven at the three point line. Uh, Kings leading the rebound count 19 to 15. So we're gonna take a, a four minute break here and we'll be right back with you. So please stay with us. You, you're watching Sydney Kings basketball on the Sydney Kings TV and radio network.
Uh, the camp's great for us here in Terrigal. They do a great job at looking after us, and the Kings have a long tradition of coming here. And for us as a group, it's just great to get away from training and come here and, and bond and spend a bit more time together as you would during the season. The group's already proven that it's going to work hard at practice and, and we've got a lot of extra stuff asked, asked of the guys and uh, they've been great as far as work and applying themselves. Been really happy with how they're sharing the ball and uh, there's been a great commitment to playing team basketball. Uh, right, right now, just simply because of the lack of uh, experience together, we, we're spending a lot of time at building cohesion. And it's a new coach, a new system, and, and uh, that's what we're developing right now. Josh and Angus uh, getting them back to Sydney, one is a great thing for us as a club going forward. And both guys are they're like two rams that practice button heads and uh, been really enjoyable. I've had to put them together on the same team to give them a rest. My, my experience so far has been great, and I think it's a lot to, to be attributed to the, the group and support staff. The guys have been great to coach, and I, I've had really good support uh, from the coaching and, and support group. So it's been very good so far. All right, this year, this year fans, we, we really need your support to come out. We've got a lot of local blokes. We've got some exciting Americans, and... We've got some good veterans coming back and playing for us. So come out and watch the Kings play and really get behind your team this year. Mighty Mike, 100% Australian made and family owned. The favourite yeast bread of the Sydney Kings. Welcome back to Scholastic Sports Stadium. That score again at halftime is the Mighty Mike Sydney Kings 48, the Goyang Orions 41. And right now it's my pleasure to welcome the young man, Eric Barrett, who is going to raise money for the Donica Clark Foundation oh, yeah, by walking 1,400 steps with the Harbour Bridge. Eric, welcome. Not a problem, mate, any time. So listen, I just wanted, how much does it mean to you to actually do this walk? It's close on your 16th birthday over yeah. the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Yeah, it was really a lot to me. Um, I'm giving back to my community. And I love sport, and um, I want to give back to the whole football coach. So your website, ericsgiveback.com.au, that's where people need to go to, to donate to this very worthy cause. Yeah, but all I need to go and never donate now, but I'm on every page. And how much have you enjoyed this game tonight, the Kings and Orions in the first half? Mate, I love it. I, I love watching the boys play. A bit way up in helping them to get prepared for the game. And it will be an interesting game. Yep. All right, well, both teams are just coming back on the court for warm-ups. So we're going to take a quick 30 second break. We thank Eric very, very much for joining us tonight. And once again, make sure you go to the website and donate. It's www.ericsgiveback.com.au. Make sure you donate. It's a very worthy cause. So with that, 2.27 left. We're going to take a quick 30 second break. We'll be right back with you. Stay with us. You're listening to Sydney Kings Basketball on the Sydney Kings Radio Network.
Mighty Moe, 100% Australian made and family owned. The favourite ye spread of the Sydney Kings. Welcome back to the Scholastic Sports Centre here in Terrigal. 90 seconds left to the end of the halftime break. And both teams just warming up. And we haven't seen the development players yet, guys. Madul, Chol, uh, James Trust and Ben Kieran's. And I guess uh, at, at this point of the game, Kings are only up seven. I think Damien might have expected, Coach Damien Cotter might have expected he might have been able to give the boys some burn even in the first half. Yeah, I think he, he might look at that later on. But um, personally, I, I think for him, he's just looking to get his players that he's been with this week working on everything that they've got. They've got three games before that blitz. And, and if you're the Sydney Kings or any other team in this league, you are looking at that blitz at really establishing yourself. So I think he'd be really keen to see what his players have got. Yeah, and, and, and I'm sure the development guys, they know that. But at, at the same time, if they get the call up, you know, the Kings get up by, you know, quite a few points late in the game and, and the, the game is, is pretty secure to, to a victory. Uh, Damien put them out there. So they, they, they just have to buy their time. The Kings coming back out with their starting unit. Perry, Kadee, Gallup, White, and Angus Brandt with three personal fouls. So Brandt and Duncan with three. That is a story to watch. It'll be Orion's possession as we get the second half underway. It's been an entertaining battle here. Both Garcia and Gillenwater, the imports, have been very impressive in different ways. Gillenwater, just a really powerful unit. As they say, Bruce, he's got lots of sand in the uh, in the <laughs> trunk. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, just an update on uh, on the match situation. There was a tweet wondering uh, why no match. He's away uh, down in Melbourne for Julian Kazoo's uh, wedding. Um, so that's the reason why he's here. Other than that, you definitely would hear him, uh, you know, shooting plenty of threes and getting involved with the team's offense. He got a day pass. Yeah. Jang knocks down a 15-footer to start the scoring. It's 48-43, 9.34 left in the third period. Five-point lead to the Kings. Today, Ryans are zoning up. White's wide open, looks at the three, turns it down. He's got Perry wide open. Perry, three ball in the air, bang. Uh, Look good from the moment it left his hand. Well, he's starting, starting from where he finished in the uh, first half. 21 points in the ball game for the Sydney Kings new import point guard. And the Sydney lead is 8, 51-43. Looking down low to Gillenwater. Just faces up, fires, Ooh. no good, short. Rebound, Kadee. Here come the Kings, they're running. Kadee exploring, foul, no call. Now he's going to pull it out and run a play. He's got White. Gallup with a good position, but he... Turns it down. Crosses court. Great pass to Brandt. He scores with the alley-oop. Nice play, Angus Brandt. Good find, Kevin White. Ten-point lead to the Kings. Yeah, good call, Matty. Great find by Kevin White there. Just getting his big man into the game because he's been a little bit quiet on foul trouble, so nothing else better than getting a nice easy two. Good double by Brandt. Goes back to his man. Now Gallup steals it. Nice play. Came over the back. White ahead to Perry. Perry goes up. Oh, what a play. Kendrick so Perry didn't have control, but somehow no. found a way. Yeah, it was so casual. I didn't think he was going to do anything with it. But he's, you, you called it in the first half, Bruce, just the balance that he's got and the hang time. Yeah. He, he's, damn, he's nice in the open court. He's got 23, and it's 55-43 as the Kings look to extend this. Mm. He's killing water. Shake and bake, misses. Rebound, Brandt, foul, no call. Here come the Kings. That's 23 points in a 22-minute game so far, and he hasn't been on the court the oh, whole time. Well, Looking for Gala, but he fumbles it away. White almost steals it, but here come the Orions. Here's the youngster, Hand, pulls it out. And they're looking inside to Jang. Jang pulled through, and Ooh, that will be that Angus Brandt's fourth personal yeah. foul. You guys were looking at it. It's a game I'm, I'm watching there and I'm seeing in the first thing he does, and we're going to get a replay here, as soon as he catches the ball, he opens up and allows him to go straight middle. And, and, and we'll see this as, as we're getting the replay. And you could just see, here he goes here, look at him. There, all he's letting him do is go middle, pull through, bang, on the body, foul. Yes, yes. 
So what has to happen is when Angus, when he squares up to Angus, Angus has got to get his hands out of there because he contacted with the hands, which got the referee's attention. And now five-second violation, so good defense from the Kings. But I'm starting to question now, Bruce, what you said, and you are 100% right. Why are they forcing middle? Yeah. You know, why are they forcing middle? It doesn't seem to be working. Make the adjustments or let him go middle. Yeah. Perry with the ball looks to penetrate. Now kicks it out. Kevin White, good rotation there. Good Ooh. pass inside by Kadi. Step through nice. Ellis and he's fouled. Probably oh. a bit disappointed he didn't make the layup. Yeah. But very good, good pass yeah. inside, and Ellis, a nice little step through, and he goes to the line for two. I tell you um, what has to give credit is, is, is Damien Cotter's offense. You know, this is not, this is not a coincidence with all the, uh, and we'll see a nice little replay here. Look, kick, not on, kick, straight to the middle, bang, and then an up, like, you, there's some, I know you've still got to get the ball to the places, but the players have to be in those places to receive the ball. And he's got some really nice offenses. I really like what he's seeing, and I like how the four-man is getting his um, getting the ball. I two two at the line for Ellis, and it's 57-43. Bruce, timeout. I, I think the point you're making is, is those places the players are aware and know where those places yeah. are, and in doing so, they have good spacing. Yeah, good point. Absolutely. 7-19 left in the third period, and the Kings have opened this up. Green's got it down to five, but Sydney just uh, starting to put their foot down in the accelerator a little bit, uh, Bruce. Yeah, you know, it, they, they've come out and um, they've started the same way they did in, in the first first quarter, first half, um, and a little bit more patient. You can see some more po poise out of them uh, in this first uh, few minutes here. And, and you know, Orioles, they just have to make the adjustment. At the moment, they're on the heels, and uh, the Kings are dictating the, uh, the tempo at the moment. And, Brad, just with Perry... I think we probably have to temper our enthusiasm a little bit, given the fact this is an NBL opposition. He's not playing against the, the, the kind of point guards he's going to expect to see. Some of the brilliant point guards, the Cedric Jacksons, the Jahi Carsons, the Scotty Wilbikins up in Cairns that he's going to see, and not to mention, of course, Stephen Dennis, who's an absolute superstar that we saw in the preseason last year before he got hurt. He's back with, with Melbourne United. But... It, it still is going to be good news for the Kings, I think, with this young man. Yeah, I mean, you, you can only play, you know, with the opposition in front of you, and that's what he's doing. He's yeah. gone out there, that's yeah. who's in front of him, and he's got 22 points. So uh, he, he's been dynamite tonight. It's still, you know, the jumper has, has dropped a little bit, so no complaints whatsoever. And if you're Damien Cotter, you'd be very impressed. Yeah. He's got Sierra in the game now. He's going to lay it off. They're just going to jack a three. That's no good. Rebound, Kevin White. And he's fouled. No, yeah. this is a travel, no. traveling violation. So, yeah, wow, let's have a look at the replay on that geez. one. Very interesting. And considering some of the blatant travels the Koreans have been getting away with all night. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure about that one. Nah, no. No, that was not a no travel. No way in the world. No. Nah. Anyway, referee's called it, so it's Korean possession. Ten on the shot clock. He's Hahn. Hahn's going to launch a three. No, good recovery by Kevin White. They're trying to find Garcia inside. Hahn kicks it out. Jang. Now they're going to jack the three. That's short. Gallup, excellent box out again. Here comes Kendrick Perry. Perry's just going to stop, pop, and it's short. Gets his own rebound. And the Kings are going to reset. And Perry with the little man Hahn harassing him at 5 foot 10. It's a pick from Garlett, four on the shot clock. Up fakes, now launches it. Banker, no good. Uh, that was a little bit sloppy offense that time, a bit too individual from the Yeah, Kings. I thought, actually thought I was going to pass it back to Tommy Garlop after the pick and pop. He's. I mean, that's Lim going all the way out, has to kick it out to Hahn with Kadi on him. Gets it inside to Garcia. Garcia going up strong, and Kevin White. Just smashes him to the floor, and Garcia's down, and he looks hurt. That is a tough foul from Kevin White. Yeah, uh, did he come down on his elbow? We're just going to have a look at the replay here. Is, uh, players just congregate around, and referees have called it an unsportsmanlike foul on Kevin White. Let's have a look here in the replay. Garcia getting a good seal. Gallup just overreaching, and then... This looked like he might have hyperextended his knee a bit. Sorry, yeah, sure. I, 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 I have it. to look at that and I say I see no unsportsmanlike foul there. It's just that's a hard foul. Absolutely, hard foul, not not intentional to hurt. That that's 
Yeah, he's just come down on his elbow no, there. It is so. his elbow, you're right, Brad. So they're giving him the magic spray is, is right out there. If you can see on the uh, television screen there. Wow, look how cold that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. That's why they call it the magic spray. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. I, um, I was just about to say before that incident happened that the um, the Orions at the moment have no offence whatsoever. No. It is no. just rat ball out there. Yeah. And uh, that that's actually totally in favour for the Kings and, and good defence, but at the moment they're just running around everywhere. Well, we'll find out if that cold stuff worked on this free throw shot. <laughs> oh, he's fine. Wow, it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's magic spray. Here's Garcia with another one at the line and he makes it. So two of two and they'll retain possession on the unsportsmanlike foul. 57-45, 554 left in the third period as Perry takes a seat replaced by Daniel Joyce. A very appreciative crowd. Kendrick with 23 in the game. Interesting thing here, like the, he's just come out, Kendrick, and we were up by 13, or okay, I mean 14, you can say 12 with those free throws. And I'm interested to see what the next few minutes like because it mm. seems that they have a lot more control. Oh, there's another the huge travel that he gets away with. <laughs> that might have been one as well. So they launch a three, no good. And we've got a foul here. I believe it's on Gillen Water. Or are they going to call it on Gallup? Nope, they're going to call a foul on Gallup. And that'll be Gallup's second foul. Check that's his first. 57.45. Here's Kim dumping it down low to Gillen Water, going to work against Gallup. Steps through, right hand shot, no good. Rebound, Gallup again. So Tommy Gallup doing the job on the boards. Kadi gets it into the front court. Here's Gallup, sprints to the high post to White. Now Ellis, Ellis wide open, three ball. Yes! Swish! And you like to see that. Well, that's what we spoke about in the, fir yeah. you know, the first half. That's what he can do. Oh, foul by Ellis that time. <laughs> oh, no, they call called a travel. And the Korean, did they? theatrically, they did. They finally wow. called a walk, and the Korean theatrically threw his head back. So the one Number time they actually limb. didn't travel, <laughs> they call it. it was probably yeah. I called a foul yeah. straight away, but instead it's a travel. King's possession up 15. White. That high-low action. Nice. Great pass inside nice. to Ellis. He's got five straight. Great feed from Tommy Gallup on the high-low. And this is just great offense. And again, I, I keep harping on it, Damien Cotter. Great offense. You know, they know what they want to do. Look at that harassment. Kevin White causes the turnover. Great defense. White kicks it back to Gallup. Left-hand dribble. Gallup, nice feed inside. Ellis up fake. Score it. Yes. But Cody Ellis, seven in a row. And just like that, this is blown right out. Sydney, 64 Goyang 45, 4.29 left in the third period. And the Kings really putting the hammer down in the last three minutes. Now they launch a triple. That's good. What a shot by Lim. And the Korean coach complaining yeah. that he was fouled, no call, but looked like he just kicked his legs out. Yeah, I didn't see anything and did the, in that. The and only did thing the that theatrics once yeah, again. Yeah, the no, only that. thing that confused everyone is the ref blew the whistle. Yeah. <laughs> That's not going to work here. He's making threes will work, but kicking your leg out is not going to work here. 64-48, 4.15 left in the third period. Here's Kadee, harassed by Hahn. Now finding Ellis, looking down low to Garlick. They slap it away, but he retains possession. Tommy Gard crossover, and he's fouled. A nice little uh, handles there from yeah, Tom. Yeah. The big man putting it between his legs. And so you're AJ Ogilvy and watching this, Bruce. What are you thinking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, a few months too late. Of course, AJ recently signed to play in, I believe, it's Spain. Spanish oh, yeah. First Division again. It's a yeah. shame. It would have been great if he stayed. Look at yeah. that, you know, like... Another foul, and it's a holding foul this time. So they're certainly racking the fouls up. That's their third team foul in this period. Yeah, the, the interesting thing with, with that, though, is um, it, it's probably... Uh, a learning curve still for Angus because he's spending a lot of time on the bench there because he's, you know, in foul trouble. So yeah. I guess if it, this will give him an, uh, a good opportunity now to see how to play that defense without the foul. Totally. Tommy Gallup hits a foul on jumper. It's 66-48, 3.50 left in the third period. Is Lim going to work? Now finds 
Back to Lim. Now Hahn up fakes mm. the three. Travelled. Got away with it. And now that's, I believe, Sang for three. Misses and there's a foul. Tommy Garlop trying to hold off Gillenwater. Called for his second personal foul. Well, the Orioles at the moment, they're getting good spacing and they, they are settling for the three and it's just not consistently going at the moment and that's allowing the Kings to uh, continue and build on the, uh, on the lead. Garlop goes to the bench with 15 points, nine rebounds and four assists. Not to mention three block shots. It's another super effort by Tommy Gallup, and now the Koreans throw it away. Well, the intensity of the Kings in this quarter has just completely thrown the Orions out of everything yeah. they were doing. Yeah. Everything they were doing good in the first half, they're not running their offense, they're throwing up quick threes. The Kings have done a great job here in this quarter. And they're coming down every possession and, and, uh, and, and executing to a point yeah. where at least it's a good, good shot. Could he harassed by Hahn. Dunker, they're looking for the high low. They don't get it this time. Now White loses it out of bounds. So a bit sloppy there. Kevin was looking for the, I think he was looking for the shot before he had possession of yeah. the ball, Bruce. Yeah. He'd already made his mind up that he was going to do something before catching it. And there's oh, another gosh. travel and gets away Dude. with it. <laughs> it uh, that's <laughs> I'm just watching How Kevin many and Even he's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes and eight seconds left. Here's Han. Nice pass to Gillenwater. Up fakes, good defense that time, Cody Ellis. Made him take a tough, contested shot. Kings rebound. Now, great pass from Kadita Ellis. Kicks it out to Joyce, and Joyce travel. Oh. Uh, they're taking great pity, these referees, on the Orion's uh, walking habits, Brad. I but actually didn't think that one was a travel. No. He I, just looked like that was a good sort of hesitation step. But, yep. Um, Blew the whistle a little too quickly. Yeah. He is. Hahn in the going quickly to their foul line now finds Sang. Sorry, Jang yeah, that is. Ooh. And now back to Lim. Lim right hand dribble goes into the paint. Up fakes. Turns now. Lim uh, Sang, sorry, fires. That's no good. Big rebound. Gillen Water score it. Yeah. That was good offense. That's what they were doing in the first half. Kings look to catch them out in transition. Nice pass by Ellis, but White fumbles it away. Turnover. Here come the Orions. Is Hahn kicking it out. They're looking for Jang. They can't find him now. Gillenwater. And here's Lim. Going into the paint. Fading away. And my goodness, they called a travel. Oh. Travel violation. And now, with the Kings up 16, we're going to see local hero James Truston plays for the local team up here, the Central Coast Crusaders in the Waratah League. Well, I think it's it, it's not a bad selection at the moment. You, you bring him out on the court with a 16-point a league, and you also bring um, Kendrick Perry out as well. So, Well, it probably also tells us a little bit as well, and, and no, no disrespect to James. Obviously, um, he, he, the coach is happy with what he's got. He's yeah. got enough out of his players where he thinks he can rotate now. So, yeah, good coaching. Cody Ellis looks at another triple and splashes it. He's got 10 in the period and 16 in the ball game at 69 to 50. Well, they get a good seal inside Gillenwater. He's going to finish that all day. But Troy Gillenwater just doing a great job. He's got 17 points and it's 69 52 with a minute 36 left in the third. Yeah, he got himself in a real good position and, and Josh was, was going to be behind the eight ball as soon as he got the ball in that middle of the keyway. Daniel Joyce looking for Ellis inside. And so we've got substitutions here. And I don't think they've still both played together the same time once tonight. No. It no, maybe, so maybe it is. It must be what we what we thought. Yeah. So here's Perry getting a pick from Dunker. Still Perry. They double team him. Nice is. pass to Dunker. Spin move. Banks it off the window nice. and in. Good finish. Uh, nice, nice finish from Josh. 71-52, a minute 13 left in the third period. Now they just jack it. That's Lim from three and he's got it. 71-55, a minute left. And he's trust him right side. Dunker, they're looking for Ellis. They can't find him on the inside. Now Perry. And there's a foul. It's a holding foul. Kendrick Perry just way too quick. 
And he's earned himself a trip to the line as oh. the Ryans are in the penalty. As and now, as we said, here comes Garcia replacing Gillenwater. Yeah. As much as they had called the foul outside the three-point line and Kenny just went ahead with it as if he was going to show something, I kind of raised up <laughs> still thinking he's going to see, as you can see in the replay. Here's Perry, crosses over. Ellis, another three, launches it, and short this time. And rebound to Garcia. Here come the Orions. Now it's Lee with the ball. Nice pass inside to Garcia. Knocks down Cody Ellis, and that's an offensive foul. The Koreans are claiming that Cody flopped. They're not happy about it. As you can see, Garcia... We might take a look at that in the replay and see if they have a point. From a first look, I thought that was not a, a, a foul. I, I thought you just got to let that play. He's playing hard, and not only that, that's his fifth foul as well. Nice interior feed. Yeah, that's he's just made a basketball move there, Brad. And Ellis was definitely there, but well, not only that, he's in the he's in the key too. I mean, yeah. in the circle. Yeah. So I mean, I know he wasn't shooting, but yeah. oh, tough one. Let him play. If in doubt, let him play. Trust him on one wing. Dunk at top of the key. Joyce gets banged off the ball. Here's Perry. Ooh. They leave him alone momentarily. Dunker's got a mismatch. Dunker, oh, offensive foul the other oh, way now. Uh, potentially a little make-up call there, Brad. Yeah, no question. Yeah, don't like that call. Don't like either of them. 71-55. Now Tommy Garlop. And the youngster, another development player, Ben Kierens, is going to come into the game for the last 11 seconds of the period as Perry and Dunker take a seat. We just saw the replay there. The only thing, and you can be, you know, these, these are good tapes, and hopefully Josh watches that. Yeah. He had a double team there, and the thing he should have done is taken the dribble back towards the sideline and then two kicks, and it's a wide-open jump shot. Yeah. And here's Gillenwater, who has a sizable size advantage against Kierens, just powers into the rack and misses at the buzzer. And that's the end of the third period with your score. The Mighty Might Sydney Kings 71, the Goyang Orions 55. We're going to take a 30-second break. We'll be right back with you. Stay with us. You're watching Sydney Kings basketball on the Sydney Kings TV network. Mighty Mike, 100% Australian made and family owned. The favourite ye spread of the Sydney Kings. Welcome back to the Scholastic Sports Stadium. It's, uh, <laughs> my broadcast partner, Bruce Bolton, was just uh, standing on my uh, <laughs> headphone cord there. Sorry about that. But once again, the score is 71 55. We'll just run through the stats quickly for you. Kings are shooting 54%. But that period, a, a, a terrific period from them. They're led by Kendrick Perry, who's got 23 points and three steals on 8 of 13 shooting from the field. Uh, Cody Ellis, a huge quarter from him. Cody with 10 in the quarter. He's got now 16 in the game on 4 of 8 shooting. And Tommy Garlop has just been terrific once again. 15 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 block shots from Tom. Really filling up the stat sheet for the Orions. Their only player in double figures is Gillenwater. He's been very strong, of course. 17 points, 5 rebounds, 2 steals, and a block shot. Charles Garcia, their other import, has 8 points. And the Orions are shooting 43% from the field. Uh, they're just 11 of 18 from the free throw line, and they're 4 of 12 from 3. Kings reading, leading the rebound count 27 to 20. Assist count favours the Kings 15 to 10. 14 turnovers for the Orions, just 11 for the Sydney Kings and points in the paint. Kings leading that category as well. 32 to 22 points from turnovers. Kings 13 points and the Orions just five. As so we're about to get underway for the final period here. Kings going with Perry back in the court. Ben Kieran's youngster development player getting some burn as well with Ellis Garlop and Kevin White. Well, I think if you're Damien Cotter now, I, I don't want to say you've seen enough, but what I mean by that is is it's three quarters, it's done. You know, you want to get the win, but you can get everyone in now and get some nice basketball. 
Good ball movement. Kevin White goes behind his back to Ellis. Almost loses it. Back to White. White. Baseline try. He likes this. Yes. Nice. That's well, Kevin White's shot, Bruce. Well, you, you're right there, Brad, and you've seen enough. What are, and what you mean by that is enough to know what the, the Orients are going to come with you at. And, yep. and then you can uh, uh, bring some, some new guys in accordingly. Oh, that's, yeah, you have to call that. He took four steps, and they finally call a travel on limb. You know what? Um, <laughs> I, I, I would guarantee you that in the Korean League, you're allowed to get away with that because that's that... NBA well, it, entertainment side of things. Well, it's happened all. too that's, much that it's got to. You know, it like to, I, yeah, it's absolutely. nearly every possession it's happening, so it's obvious that that's the way it is. White throws steps through from double team. Here's young Ben Kieran's three ball in the air, Good short, look. tapped out by Ellis, but straight to uh, Gillenwater. Big man from New Mexico State. Oh, stolen from wow. by Perry. That's his fourth steal. Wow, those long arms and quickness. Perry fakes, goes into the lane, tries to throw it down, and he's fouled. Holy cow, that would have been some highlight right there. We've got to see that replay. Well, it would have been a highlight, but... Um, he wasn't even close. No. <laughs> that was not, I, I know he's got some serious yeah. ups, but no, that's... Um, well... The, that, that would have struggled on a nine-foot ring. Yeah, the, and, and the other... Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah he was... Yeah. Ooh, the I'm other, giving him the better for the doubt. No, yeah. that's, that's the King's media manager coming <laughs> out there. <laughs> <laughs> he makes a free throw. Yeah, uh, guilt, guilty, he, he, guilty as charged. Yeah, he wanted just a little bit of something extra to, to, to write about, which I can understand. But <laughs> one of the points... It's from an 11-foot ring. <laughs> <laughs> one of the points from that, though, is Kendrick is going to have to understand in that transition to, to make that bounce pass to the guy oh, that was off, on his right side. Offensive rebound off the yeah. missed free throw. And Cody Ellis now has 18 points, and the Kings have blown this out. It's out by 22. Well, I agree. Yeah, Bruce, I agree with it. Because that's happened a couple of times tonight. So um, you'd want to see that. Look at Gillenwater with a moves inside. Nice. Went, crossed over a couple of times and scored. What a play. 77 57. Gillenwater's got 19. Thanks to Ben Kieran's out there. Looking for White on the curl. He finds him. They double team White and he's fouled. Too physical. And <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think so, Kevin. No. Nah. <laughs> Kevin White making out like he was going to jam it but the gallop is going to be replaced by yeah I like this sub Angus Brand I like this sub that's Damien basically saying right get out there show me what you can do yeah. Angus don't foul yeah. and play yeah. so I really like that sub here's Perry wide open three no good that time rebound to Jang here's Lee with the ball finds Jang back to Lee Lee, nice pass on the give and go. There's a kick, so that'll be a reset to 14. And it'll be so, Matt, I'm just confirming the, the new rule and making sure it's 100%. If you get an offensive board now, it stays at 14 seconds. Correct, it resets to yeah. 14. Yeah. They started it at the Eastern Kentucky game. The Kings won. Bruce and I were there for it. Sutherland. And it's certainly an interesting rule. I thought at first it was a FIBA rule as there's a turnover. Here's White. And White just throws it off the leg of the young Orion's player. Now his Gillen Water goes to the rack, an offensive foul. Wow. That time it was an offensive foul. Just barreled over Cody Ellis. Let's just have a look at that replay. That's Troy Gillen Water's fourth personal foul. Yeah, Ellis yeah. was there. He was yeah. there right in front of the, the semicircle. Yeah. Good call by the officials that time. Yeah, and Gillian, he was a little bit out of control as well. Jason Kadee replaces Ben Cairns. It'll be King's possession leading by 20. Only player we haven't seen yet is the King's third development player, Madhul Chul. Very exciting Sudanese-Australian prospect. This Kevin White, wide open, three in the air. That's long this time. Cody Ellis, good work on the boards, but they slap it out. The Ryans are on the break. Travel again got away with it. Now they've got a wide open look at three. Well, that's what they're good at. They're good at, uh, you know, getting out and running, you know, spotting up for the open three. But and he knew exactly where he was going to be as well. He didn't even have to look at him. Yeah. Lim with a triple, 77-60. Jason Gadea has a look at a three. Now dumps it down low. He's, Ellis goes to work. Oh, nice. nice move by Cody Ellis, and he scores. Uh, this is really good news for Kings fans. He was quiet in the first... 
preseason game that he uh, played in a, against Hartford, but he's come to play tonight. He's got 20. He's been very impressive. Six of ten shooting from the field for Cody. And now Kendrick Perry. He is long. And this is what we're seeing. And long that's and active. Six six wingspan. You're right, Bruce. The activity. Yeah. That's it. That's what's so impressive. And here's Gillenwater isolated, just launches it against Angus oh, Brandt, knocks tough. it down. That's tough. He's got 21, 79, 62. That is just tough, like you said, Bruce. You live with those. Yeah. You know, if you're gonna make him make those every all game, you'd be fine. Kadi dumps it to Ellis. He's got the baseline, launches it. Foul! It scored the basket. Cody Ellis just Great makes work. something out of nothing. Score the basket and the foul. Let's have a look at this replay. Sort of went up awkwardly with the right hand, but stayed with it. Good body control. Showed yeah, enough touch to finish with it. That's the key. Yep, he kept control of his uh, good body balance. That, he switches touch. hands and just scores, and it's fouled. Super play by Ellis. He's got 20. And here's Cody for the end one. It's in the air, and it's good. Back to a 20-point lead for the purple and gold. Sydney 82, Goyang 62, 6.50 left in the ball game. But they're looking for Gillen Watery up fakes against Brandt. Now he just spins and misses. Ooh. Short rebound Ellis. Here's Perry to Ellis. Good nice sail inside pass. from Brandt. Nice Layup good. Pass. Again, Bruce, we've talked about this, the high-low action. Well, I like the fact that um, Angus straight, around, straight away went down there and established an inside presence. Straight away you can see he's talking more. He's more active, Angus. Gillen Water kicks it out. Now they launch a tray. No good that time. Offensive rebound to Lee. And knocked out of bounds by Kendrick Perry. We've got 11 on the shot clock. 6.08 on the game clock. Lee with the ball, finds Chun. Now Gillenwater for three! So the big man shows he's got some range and knocks it down. Gillenwater with 24. 84-65. White looking for Ellis inside. And there's a foul on the floor here. No basket. Well, Cody's and been dynamite tonight. 7 of 11, 2 of 5 from the three-point line, 7 of 7 from the three-throw line. So, so he's been great. Great output coming off the bench. Kevin White will go to the line with the Koreans in the penalty. First one is good. For Kevin. That's his sixth point in the game. Also to go with five assists there too, and Matt. He's had a decent game. Misses the second. Here come the Koreans on the break. Here comes Kim for three, and he knocks it down. So Kim Kang Sung hits one, and it's 85-68. 5.40 left. And now they almost steal it. Lee gets into the passing lane. As you can see, they're very effective on a missed shot because they, they push the ball up the court, get guys on, uh, on either lane to spot up for the three. And not very often they actually look to attack the basket in transition. They look for the three-point shooters. Yeah, they spot up really well there. Their best offense has been when the Kings play bad yeah. offense themselves, which gives them the ball back. And now an offensive foul, and that'll be Angus oh, Brandt's geez. nine over. That wasn't a uh, foul there. No. <laughs> Angus sort of ruefully going to the bench. It was a right. bit of a tough night for Angus. He never really got going early. Foul trouble finishes with just the four points and the one rebound. So that 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 is a terrible call, and I and I will give that, but. The only thing, and I, and I keep harping on it, the same thing as last year. He's got to sit not because of that foul. It's because the four silly fouls before it. Yeah, yeah. And I understand that's a bad call, but that, that's going to happen all year. You're always going to get a bad call. It's those little hand-checking ones mm -hmm. and those little ones by the leg that then puts that in the position where now you've got to sit. Well, he's, yeah, and, and, and he's going to have to understand that during this preseason, for example, he's gotten himself into foul trouble majority of the games. So... What is it that he is doing wrong? What are the adjustments he need to make so that doesn't continue to happen? Because he don't want to, uh, don't want to go into the season 
worrying about, um, you know, getting himself into foul trouble because it's okay tonight because they're up by 20. Once, once the real deal starts, it's going to have a, 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 an impact on the team's, you know, success, not having their, their big man in the game regularly enough to well, give them gonna, that, that inside presence. It's going to affect them big time, I agree. And, and you're, you're also talking of a rookie in the league. Yes. And getting backed up by another rookie in the league. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, you, you're right about that, but the rookies need to be learning as we speak yep. and making adjustments every day uh, yep. possible. No, I totally agree. And, uh, and you know, he's been he, – he can play. There is yeah. no question about that. Yeah. We've seen that. And I know the first game you called, you and I spoke, and he was tremendous. Yes, yes. And so it's there. Yeah. It's just uh, – he's just got to now fit that in. King's going back to a 2-3, interestingly, and give a wide open three. And he hits it. Yeah. There you go. 85 71. I think the Koreans' eyes light up when they see that little 2 3 zone, Brute. Yeah. Brad? Well, that's the second time they've gone to a zone, and on the first pass, they've given yeah. up a three. Yeah. So that, that's not going to impress a coach. Why is that happening? Oh, look out. Kadeen! Oh. Oh. Here wondering. we go. You saw it coming. Kadeen to Perry. Alleyou flush. Hello, Mr. Perry. I was wondering when that was going to happen, and I knew it was going to happen with Jason Kadee and, and uh, Kendra's out there together. Now you yeah. can write about that one, Matt. That yep. was good to write about. <laughs> no, it's a good one to write about. Thank you, Kendrick. We will uh, get that replay. It's coming. That was a sensational dunk, and he was up there for a while. And by the way, Kendrick Perry is barely 6'1". 40, that's, that's what a 42-inch vertical leap in a 6'6 six, six wingspan will get you. What a play. They're looking for that high-low, and... Yeah, it the might have been there too. Kevin White's going to go to the line again. Here we go. But here's the replay. Look at and just uh, you can't see it off the ball, but I was watching Kendrick all the way on this. They were looking to double him, and then he just there it is. Goes backdoor, gets a great pick from Ellis. Kadee perfectly throws it up, and he just throws it down. Not a lot of effort there, was it? No. <laughs> He's very athletic. Well, you know, right now. when I when I looked at the play evolving. I didn't actually think it's going to be Ali Aliyup because he was so blasé with yeah. his hops. He's uh, very, very athletic. There's some exciting times coming up for the Sydney Kings this season with him around. Ellis, one of two at the line, 88-71. As we wind down the clock here, 4.37 left. Another three in the air. That's no good. Cody Ellis, big rebound. Here comes the exciting Perry ahead of the bat to oh. Dunker. Kicks it to Kadeem. Nice pass inside. Ellis throws Don't it up. It. No. Whoa, <laughs> he just threw it up from his backside <laughs> just about. This is it. Orion's on the break. Lee kicks it out. Hand up, fakes. Nice pass inside. And Gillenwater finishes with a layup. He's been terrific. There's Gillenwater. He's got 26. I think the only thing that Damien could be a little bit disappointed in the last few minutes is just how easy the looks are coming for, for the Orions. You know, in the zone, it's one pass shot. Kenry Perry, left hand layup, no good. Offensive rebound, Dunkers score it. They're not having any problems down this end. No. And that's not the issue. No. It's more, you know, they come down the other end and on the defensive end, and I know it's been a long week, but, you know, you, you want to, everything's got to be perfection. That's yeah. what you're looking for right yeah. now. 90 to 73, and yeah. now. That's an example of it as yeah. well. An on ball screen force him. Um, over the ball. Yeah. Over the screen. Yeah. You know, you talk about this all the time, and we're going to see the replay here. and exactly what Bruce is saying. You, you'll, you'll see Jason Kadee, he'll have the ball, and he hears that the, 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 the on-ball screen is coming. He should, and, he, and we're going to see it right here, he should now be pushing that ball over the screen, bang. As soon yes. as he does that, yes. he's out of control. Yes. All that's going to happen is that he's going to foul or one of his teammates are going to have to foul him. Well, and, and the thing is, what probably would happen with this, this footage of the last five minutes is probably will be in their video session tomorrow or yep, Monday absolutely. or whatever when they point out the, the breakdowns down the stretch. And that's what, exactly what these games are for. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter who you're playing. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I guess, you know, we, we can start to look now. I mean, this is, I, I have to think, one of the most exciting upcoming seasons I, I've been involved with for a while. And, Matt, I know you, you've been really excited to see the season come along. But, you know, where do we rate the Kings? It's going to be tough this year, Brad, because of every team to my as reckoning pretty much every team has improved. Yeah. 
the argument could be made Perth with replacing Ennis with DeAndre Daniels. Yeah, you know what? You don't have to improve too much when you've won it. When you've won it. <laughs> New Ze- Melbourne are obviously the team everyone's talking about. It, it, you know, and I, I was talking to Chris Anstey in, when we were in Ballarat. They played the Adelaide 36ers in their opening preseason game. And I said to Chris, you've built a wildcat killer. And he said, mm. yes, absolutely we have. Well, that's what you got he to said, do. We've got to, he said, absolutely, we've, we have to put that out there. That is what we the are only, trying to do. The only question I would have at the moment is, I think Adelaide losing Daniel Johnson. Probably Adelaide's is, the one team yeah, that you would look at going backwards, theoretic. I think. I do like the fact that they brought Jamal Wilson into yeah, this team. that was a good get. Yeah, yeah I think he'll yeah. be really good. Um, I, I haven't seen or know of their other import yet, so we'll see him at well, the Blitz. Well, interestingly enough, Daquan Montreal tried out for the Kings last year for the second import spot. Yeah, it was here Dandy Dong, wasn't he? He playing? was, yeah, that's so right. I saw him. I came down to that game. He's impressive. Very long and athletic, But too. he's no Daniel Johnson. No. So stolen by Kendrick Perry. Here we go. Penry goes up and throws it down with one hand. Nice. What was that you said, Brad, about it? Uh, Blase? Not that one. <laughs> Not, Not that, that one. one. <laughs> Thanks, Kendrick Perry. Now Gillenwater just knocks over Dunker. No call. No, but get, uh, Kendrick Perry putting on a show in the last two minutes. He's got 28. 92.75. Not only was that a show, he, he changed gears so yeah. quick. Beautiful. He's, he's a good find. I, I don't care about the opposition. Doesn't matter who they are. We've seen enough tonight to know that he's going to be good. Here he is again, Perry. Uh, with no look pass to Ellis. Ellis with the shot clock winding down, kicks it out. Dunk is going to launch it with two on the shot clock. Banks it, no good. Perry, with, oh, excuse me, that's Madul Cho with the ball. Oh, Shoot yeah, it, young man. No, he <laughs> kicks it out to Perry. They're going to Poor kid, reset. he was right in front of his bench. All eight <laughs> teammates are yelling at him. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Perry now. Perry steps back, launches a triple. That's short. Cho flies for the board, can't grab it. Rebound Gillenwater, who sort of go, walks out a little bit gingerly. Uh, it's really turning into jungle ball right now. Here's Gillenwater going hard to the oh, rack. Oh, it's down a monster. Oh, yeah, yeah, Troy yeah. Gillenwater, hello. No, My no. goodness. Ooh. You can see it coming. Wow. So Madul Chul gets posterized. Yeah, he does. You've got what? to see that replay. Kendrick Perry's going to sit down. And what a game he played. Great game. Yeah, welcome look to at the this. league, young fella. Two big ducks. Madul Chul goes up and says, no. <laughs> And, in that, and actually, it wasn't a foul. Yeah, it wasn't. I don't it think he touched. It him. Wasn't a foul. It was got a good dunk. He just got, got dunked call on it. his head. Yeah, <laughs> and a little shimmy at the end of it too, which yeah. I liked. Wow. Unfortunately, that's going to make the drive home a lot longer for him. <laughs> <Yeah>. Paul Madul. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't take the three and gets dunked on at the other end. Ninety-two seventy-eight on the back of a spectacular three-point play from Troy Gillenwater. Joyce to Kadee. They're in a zone now. Chul dumps it down low. He's Ellis, baseline fade. That's an air ball. Poor shot. Rebound to Ryan. See, they come. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, another travel. Another travel. <laughs> I think referees are going to put their whistles away now with less than two minutes left. Nice fake. Ball fake. Layup, no good, though. And, oh, steals the ball. Here's Gillenwater. Goes up. Double clutch. No good. Tip, no good. Tip, good. Three bites of the chair, and he finally scores. <laughs> two points, eight offensive rebounds. Yeah. <laughs> Gillenwater has 33 points and 11 rebounds. Wow. 92-80, 130 left, so they're making a little bit respectable. Nice pass from Kadee to Ellis. Look at the basket on the big fella. Finds oh. Chol, now Kadee, now Joyce. Joyce going baseline, kicks it out to Chol. Chol, three ball in the air, short. Rebound to Ellis. Ellis, reverse layup is good. Good yeah. work. Good work there from Josh. That's where that came from. He just, Josh Junker just hung around there. Got a little tap on it, which was enough for Ellis to get the, the shot off. Cody Ellis with 26 in the game, and it's 94-80. 107 left here at Terrigal. And they're going to try and get the Kings development players, James Trustum and Nick Pozaglu out there. And nice, just a hitch dribble. Super little move there by Lee. And Joyce didn't stay with him and earned himself a trip to the line. Well, that's their strength, taking them off the dribble. That's what they do. Here's the replay here. Look at this dunk. Look at that one wow. hand tomahawk jam. And a little bit of a dance. Just a the little bit of, of showtime. Little little dance. Well, you know, we spoke about it before uh, the game started. Personality, character. Yeah. yeah. 
that's what's going to bring fans to the uh, and that throw the down Dome. there from Josh Childress as well. Love it, yeah. throw. Yeah, for those, and just to interrupt, sorry guys, I just wanted to mention for those Kings fans who haven't bought a membership, um, I urge you go to the website sydneykings.com. Membership start as low as hundred dollars for don't a five game. Don't urge them, Matt. Don't urge them. Tell them you're crazy. You're if crazy you if go. you don't go. <laughs> and get there for warm ups as well. And <laughs> If you, uh, if you want to just, you can also call the membership team, the Sydney Kings membership team on 029-746-0828. I think what's important to know as well, and you, you're talking about membership, not only are you going to get to see a great team, you're also going to get to see a great team they're playing against. There is no easy win this year. Yeah. There's going to be some really, really good games. No question about it. Here's Kadee harassed and he draws the foul, so Jason will get some free throw practice with 40 seconds left. I think Jason Cadiz hasn't obviously hasn't got the numbers, but I think he's played wow. very, very well tonight. Just we have another replay of Kenrick's monster jam. Yeah, you know what? what played you, under control, Bruce. What you're going to get from Jason this year is smarts, good, intelligent basketball, control the tempo, make sure guys are in place to run the offense, good defense, and when the opportunity is there, he will, he will, uh, you know, shoot the jumper and and, uh, and shoot the threes and contribute, uh, you know, when when those opportunities are there. Prior to that, he'll just make sure he, you know, lead the team um, and, and make sure they're controlled. Well, I just love the options that Damien's got. We we keep oh, nice little out door. Oh, long yeah. long pass oh. and he travelled and <laughs> travel, yeah. Nice little play there. It was a well, nice little baseball yeah. full-court pass. Well, what right. I was saying there is I just love the fact, you know, we, we keep saying it as well, Ben Madgen's not here tonight. Josh yeah. Childress is not playing. Yeah. So, you know, the options that he's got this year, he's built a nice squad. Yeah. I think it's going to be a lot better than what people realise, Brad. I think this is an underrated team so far, and that's just how Damien Cotter likes it. Go under the radar. Kadee, nice move to the rack. Score it with a left hand nice. and the foul. Yeah. Now Great that, play, Jason Cadee. And well, that's a classic example. We know Jason can score. You know, it's just that he's, you know, pretty smart with the basketball and like to get his, his teammates involved. Saw the opportunity to, to go to the basket strong with his left hand and finish, as we can see in the replay. Taking his time, composure, punch the gap, make contact, body control, finish. Nice, yeah, nice finish. And gets the three-point play. 99-82, 18 seconds left. Here are the Orions. They're just going to jack it from three. Looks good. It's swish. So that's a great shot. 12 seconds left. 98-85. Here's Jimmy Truston. They want him to score. Truston going hard to the rack. And there's a foul. Offensive. Oh, no. They call an offensive foul. Crowd's going to hate that. James Truston was looking to flush it on somebody's head. Yeah, Instead, he, he ran over an Orions player. And that's unfortunate. Crowd's not happy. But you can hear the booing. In the background here, so you take a look at the replay. Yeah. And Ooh, that might have been late coming underneath. You can see Kendrick Perry on the bench asking see, for a blocking ooh, foul, but he might still be moving a little bit. Yeah. 5.4 seconds left. Kings about to win their third straight game of the preseason, and they've been made to work. You know, there's no question about it. Koreans have worked hard today. They get it up court quickly. Up fakes. Now launches it. That's an air ball. Rebound. Joyce. And that's it. It's all over. The Mighty Might Sydney Kings have come away with a 98 to 85 win in the first game of the series against the Goyang Orions. Certainly a, a highlight reel from Kendrick Perry in that second half. Two monster dunks. Cody Ellis really caught fire as well in that second half, had a tremendous game. But And for the Koreans, the Goyang Orions, certainly by no means disgraced Bruce Bolton. No, not at all. You know, we knew they were going to come out and, um, and, you know, jack up the threes, push the ball at every, uh, you know, every given opportunity. And uh, the imports play well. It's just that they had that lull in the third quarter where the Kings just took control of the game and the tempo. Brad. What were, what were the things that most impressed you about uh, the Kings' performance tonight? Well, I think the overall product, really. I, I think, you know, the, um, Damien's been up here all week with his squad and he's put him through everything that he wants. And, and I think you could go through each individual player and say, that's the positive that I got out of that. And unfortunately, yeah, you're, and that's what you want at this stage, the negatives as well. Uh, I, I think 
you know, on the positive side, Kendrick was outstanding. Uh, he'd be very impressed with him. Cody Ellis has come in here fantastic. Um, e everyone sort of played their role. I thought Tommy Garlett was outstanding. Uh, the, the, the downside of it would be the way the bigs handled the people in the block. Um, and that's something that's going to be a focus because there's some big boys in this league. And when we look forward to United and the Wildcats, meaning Melbourne United, that is, and the Wildcats and, you know, Wollongong who have big boys and, and, and New Zealand, um, you know, that, that's probably going to be the downfall that he'll take out of that tonight. But that's great. That's what you want. You don't want to come out of here with a 10-point, 20-point, 30-point win and get nothing out of it. So all in all, I think he'd be stoked. I want to, obviously, they've got the Orions uh, Wednesday night and we'll all be, once again, we'll be here for that. And uh, we'll be here, I should say, uh, broadcasting for you. Full audio and video streaming, as we've said, right through the preseason. We're thrilled to be bringing it to you. But uh, on Monday, gentlemen, uh, a certain gentleman that all three of us are extremely familiar with, you two have been coached by him. Brad coached with him as well the greatest coach in Australian basketball history and quite frankly the greatest coach I've ever seen period in Brian Gorgian and his Dongguan Leopards and coming to Alexandria on Monday night at, at 7 o'clock and again the three of us will be there bringing you all the action on, on Sydney Kings TV and what are your thoughts on, on this matchup and, and having the great man back in the country? Well I, I, it's no question it's going to be uh, great to see him and it's always um, you know great for the sport for Brian to, to come back and, and demonstrate his uh, his coaching, and it's going to be good to see uh, the team that he's he's bringing along. Rest assured, there'll be some full court pressure. <laughs> there'll be some some pacing along the sideline. Um, you, you'll see. And Brian. that's probably just from Brian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, yeah, it, it, it's going to be great to see him, and it, you know, it's something that uh, the Kings, uh, you know, are, are great at promoting the game and, and opportunities to, uh, you know, get around to the different associations and see what uh, what they're going to bring to uh, the table this year. And Brad, your your thoughts on on Brian, a man? Well, I just hope he gets a tech gal and gets thrown out. I texted him today, <laughs> but no, look, he's arrived in the country today. He's had actual training at Alexandria. Um, you know, you know, for people that, that are listening, if you've got an opportunity to get down there, get down to that game. It's going to be really good. The the, the budget that a Chinese team has under Gorgian is dramatically different to an NBL team. Yes. So you're not going to see an undersized or not such a good team. You're going to see a damn good product. Yes. Like, you know, for Brian, when he's looking for an import, it's NBA quality or NBA experience, full yes. stop. It, yes. It's not a guy coming out of college and let's hope he's good. So, so you're going to see some seriously good basketball, and I'm really looking forward to that game. And, and again, it's, it gives the Kings another different look to help them prepare for the upcoming season, knowing that, uh, that the quality imports that uh, Brian is going to have is, is something they really going to make sure they have to be prepared for um, along with uh, the players surrounding those, um, those imports. And they'll be fit. Nick Popovic is <laughs> still part of that program. <laughs> And so that they'll be fit, and, and like you know, like Bruce said, that'll be full court, that'll be up yeah. and in. Yeah. Um, you know, knowing Gorge, he's probably got a camera here tonight that he'll be you know watching tonight, so he can scout the whole team. <laughs> so yeah, well, actually, he might have been might have been watching the game with a little one of his special drinks on the side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the glass of red. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Or three. Or three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we sign out here, we'll just take you through the final stats once again. The Kings win ninety-eight to eighty-five. They're led by Kendrick Perry, who was just sensational. 28 points on 10 of 18 shooting. He was 6 of 7 from the free throw line and had 5 steals. Just a single assist, and I'm sure he'll work on that. Uh, but obviously with Najin and, and uh, Childress not in uniform tonight, uh, took it upon himself to carry some of the scoring load. Cody Ellis was just sensational in that second half. 26 points on 8 of 14 shooting. He was 8 of 9 from the free throw line, 2 of 5 from 3. He added five rebounds and a couple of assists. Tommy Gallup, just a, a productive workman-like display as ever. 15 points, nine rebounds, four assists, a steal, and three block shots for Tommy. And both uh, Jason Kadee had nine points and four assists and really played solidly, I thought, under control all night long. And uh, Josh Dunker finished with nine for the Kings. For the Orions, they shoot 48... Oh, sorry, the Kings, I should say, shoot 54% from the field. That was impressive. Uh, sorry, we're just actually, yeah, we're fine. <laughs> so uh, Damien Cotter was just asking if we wanted a, an interview. We're just, we're unfortunately running out of time. So we'll grab Damien on Monday <laughs> for a post-match interview. 
I, I just, like, sorry, man, I like that because not too often coaches yeah, ask to come up. And yeah. then he got snubbed by the media manager. <laughs> What's going on uh, there? Yeah, I, think I'll, I think I'll hear about that <laughs> afterwards, quite frankly, <laughs> just quietly. Um, <laughs> for the Orions, they shoot 48%. He just told me he was really happy. Does that help? <laughs> <laughs> so the Orions shoot 48% from the field. Uh, there were uh, 45% from three. They hit nine triples tonight, just 14 of 21 from the free throw line. They're led by Troy Gillenwater. He was spectacular. 33 points, nine rebounds. I, I don't think they counted a couple of those rebounds. He had like three yeah. straight of yeah. that one possession. Yeah. So they've just given him the one rebound instead of three. 33 points, nine rebounds, two steals and a block shot. He was the only player in double figures, actually, for the Orions. Uh, then we had Lim Jong-il with nine, Chun jung Kyu with nine, and um, Charles Garcia with eight points. And um, Kings won the rebound count, 34 to 30. Assist count was 18 to 16 to Sydney. And uh, turnover count, 21 turnovers to the Orions, to the Kings, 14. Kings, 44 points in the paint to the Orions, 32. So we're going to wrap things up here. And um, with that, I'm Matt McQuaid once again, and, and thanks for joining us tonight on Sydney Kings TV. And I certainly hope you've enjoyed the action. As we said, we will be back on air Monday the 8th of September at 6.45pm as the Kings take on Chinese team, the Dongguan Leopards, coached by the one and only Brian Gorgi in that game at Alexandria Basketball Stadium. It's a, pretty much a sellout. There's, there were 30 tickets remaining this afternoon, so that'll be a sellout. So if you can't make it to the game, make sure you join myself, Bruce Bolden and Brad Rosen. So on behalf of my broadcast partners, the great Bruce Bolden, the great Brad Rosen, and our technical guru and producer, James Bowman, with thanks, great thanks to VPA Productions for the great work that they did. It's been great to have your company tonight on Sydney Kings TV. Stay safe wherever you are. Good night. Stay tuned. <laughs>